El Horrible. Horrible. El Horrible and Vidabla. Give them their props! Let me uh, add uh, the core dip. Hello, Mama. I'm not going to lie. I could watch Tuki all day long. Tuki's fantastic. Tuki's amazing. I'm sorry. Could we talk Tuki a bit? I'm a Tuki guy. I'm a Tuki guy. Do you play with those breasts and, like, have fun with them? Ray, I haven't stopped playing with these breasts since I put them on. Oh, my God. He's an idiot. Haka haka. I did text that to Shuli, Vince, and B-Dabbler. That this and B-Dabbler, who's that? <laughs> that's Ooh. our replay. The following program is of adult nature and may be inappropriate for persons under the age of 18. The following program is a adult nature may not be suitable for some of my friends. It's time for D-Dablin Lies. When you wanna know who's got the show? There's seven dicks in my ass, and there's all these room for eight. Check out my man kitty. The mighty horse rocks, he rocks a fat ass. Hey buddy, fuck my D along! Stop right now! Greetings, dabblers, and welcome to Saturday Morning Be Dabbling Live. I am your host, 16-year-old YouTube sensation, broadcasting from his mother's basement, high above the Rocky Mountains. My name is El Harible. It is not Tukey or Mummy Milkers. I'm working on it. I'm going to the gym. I just learned yesterday I should be doing bench presses. I knew that, but... I don't like the gym at all. So I feel like everyone is judging me. But I kind of also realize they don't give a shit about me. But I am working on my mummy milkers. I'm all about results. So if anyone has cocaine to make this go a little faster, I would appreciate it. Whoa, what a big show we have today. Stut Joe Depot Speaks. Where has Stut Joe Depot been? He's obviously not a part of the Shuli network anymore, we have learned. But what led to that? What is going on? Are things just falling apart over at the Shuli network? Also, OJ, yesterday on Joey C stream with Dr. Chow, the Mega G, the Mega G's collide. That was awesome, so we'll have to get into that. All that and your calls later. We will let you call in uh, to ask Stut Joe some questions, but we want to wait until we get his whole story and we hear everything. Uh, Obviously, uh, we'll take your questions in the chat and super chats and all that kind of crap, but we will take uh, some questions. There's my laundry basket back there. That's where I do. That's my Ray DeVito laundry basket. Uh, all right. So let's get into it. OJ. Good how morning. Are how are you, my horrifying friend? <sighs> I'm doing great. I'm excited about today's show. Uh, I can't wait to get going. Yeah. Yeah. It. Uh, everyone is very excited uh, to hear what Stut Joe has to say about his exit from the Shuli Network. Uh, so we're not even going to uh, tease it any longer. We're going to bring Stut Joe on right now. Here is the man, the myth, the legend, Stut Joe Depot. Uh, what's up, you guys? What's happening, dude? Not much, man. I like you as a robot. I like this. I like that everyone who was kind of faceless in this universe is now using the filter game to kind of, you know, bring a little bit of... Uh, emotion i guess or or just bring a little bit of something else 
to the table. Yeah, so some, I like that. Some might call it an act of cowardice. Yes, we are all cowards. We are all cowards. I we don't are, want anyone to see my We face. are an army of cowards. Yes, that's why we fight on the internet. Duh. <laughs> anyway, uh, Stud Joe, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for uh, agreeing to do this on our show. I know earlier in the week, uh, OJ reached out to me and said, hey, Stud Joe wants to come on our show and kind of talk about his exit from the Shuli Network. And I was like, that sounds like it's going to fill up close to two hours. So, yes, let's absolutely do it. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, there's a there's a lot to unwrap here. Um, you know, I'm here to kind of defend myself a bit. Um, I, I'm not here because I want to trash anybody. Um, sure. And and that's that's the thing. I'm not looking to trash anyone. I'm not looking to ruin anyone's lives. You wanted to say your piece. We wanted to give you a platform to do it. So we're going to do it. We are going to do it without Shuli. Uh, I uh, will send the link later if Shuli wants to come on. If he's not coward, if he's not a coward and he will face us, but no, I want you to get everything out first. Then we'll take some calls from the listeners, get their questions. And, uh, you know, I'm, I'm just curious because you were a guy who came up in the dabble verse right around the same time as El Harible. Uh, I know I even used some of your clips in one of my early videos when uh, when John was uh, talking to that. Uh, oh, what was her name? He kept saying her name wrong. Oh, oh uh, 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 Ava Reza. Ah, uh, yes, Ava Raza. Yeah. yeah, and he kept calling her something something wrong. So the, yeah, like you were you were uh, definitely an inspiration to me. And uh, I thought it was cool that we kind of ca uh, came on the scene at the same time. I think I don't know. Yeah, I think we Maybe launched not. our channels like within a week of each other. It was yeah. Close. So that was cool. So how how did you end up in the dabble verse? First of all, were you a, a Stern fan, an O and A fan? A uh, Stern fan, definitely. Long time listener. Um, I fell into the dabble verse. Uh, I kind of got pulled into the dabble verse. Believe it or not, I listened to uh, ROTC and Merch and Royce were. Uh, had one of the first run-ins with John and that kind of reignited my interest in all the Stern show lore and what was right. going on with John currently. So who, uh, who approached you about joining the Shuli network originally? So I, I actually approached them. Um, I reached out to him. Uh, I'd heard him talking on the show about needing help editing videos. Uh, I had, I had the archive, I had the content, um, and I had, I had time, uh, I had, you know, had just moved to Florida. Um, yeah, I reached out and was, you know, curious about if they needed help. And uh, Shuli reached right back out to me and said, yeah, I'm a big fan of your work. And uh, when, can, when can you start, basically? So I started pretty immediately. It was back in uh, October. So I think it was like the third week of October. Um, and, and what was your immediate, like, what did you immediately start doing for them? Like, what, is this, what did the job entail, like, at first? So at first... The really the only show that we had going on was the Uncle Rico show, the only show that had any kind of traction. Um, right. There was no BS show yet that didn't start until December. Uh, we were doing Miserable Men, but there was not really a whole lot of uh, attention to that at the time. Um, who the, else was on? The, who else was on the team okay. at that point? So that at that point, I mean, truly Mike, Bob, uh, and Iso. Okay, so all. Iso was yeah. there before you. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, isa has been there for uh, a lot longer than I have. Interesting. Yeah. Uh, so then, and now, like, was was the pay enough that you were doing this full time, or were you doing something else on the side? Were you just kind of freelancing other projects? Like, was it because I know you have a family, and I can't imagine that the Shuli Network makes enough money to support all these families. No, uh, so it wasn't a lot of money. Uh, I work on various jobs, uh, you know, side jobs, odd jobs. I do graphic design. I do gig work. Sure. I do, you know, I, wor I work in, in construction a little bit. Um, basically, whatever I can do to fill up my time and to, you know, to bring in money. And I saw this as just, you know, another avenue to, I said, I'm already cutting clips up. I'm already doing this. I, you know, might as well try to try to get something for it for the hobby. Right. So. So were you paid per like project or were you paid by the hour or how did that so, work? So 
the pay i don't really want to get too much into the numbers of the no, pay no, that's why um, it, that's it, what i'm saying like did they pay I, you on an hourly basement basis but per no. project or no it was like a once a month you would get you know a little bit of money and that was so it. was it like a percentage deal almost uh, I don't know that it was a percentage. It, it, it may have been at first, but uh, so but it was I, I was brought on. It was know, always different. I, I, I was brought on at first under the guise of, not really guys, but under the impression that I wasn't going to be paid until we started making more money, which I was kind of okay with at first because it didn't really feel like work. It was still fun at that point. I was having fun doing what I was doing. and Sure. Uh, did, I didn't really... I guess realize what I was getting myself into. Um, when I had reached out originally uh, to Shuli, I'd wanted to start like a clips channel for him, where that just you know clipping the show, putting it up, trying to drive more traffic. Um, it kind of evolved into this full fledged producer role, where I'm in the back of Streamyard for every show, and I'm sending guest links, and I'm pulling content. And I'm, there was there there was there was a lot that was you know, added to the role as time went on. And I was, you know, for the most part, I was okay with, you know, all the responsibilities, the, we would add new shows and uh, that, that would increase the, the, the time draw. Chicken little uh, syndrome asks, is it a cult? Would you consider the Shuli network a cult? I wouldn't consider it a cult. No, I never drank the Kool-Aid. All right. So, you hopped on thinking, oh, okay, maybe we'll just do a clips channel. I'll just pull some clips. And then it turned into. Yeah. And, and it was, you know, it was, it was more than that too. It was producing the content for the uncle Rico show that at the time they were taking a lot of flack for using clips off of Reddit. And right. you know, my, my solution to that was basically, you know, I've got this archive and you guys don't got to take that flack anymore. If we just, you know, pull from what I already have. Right. <clears throat> so at first it's just you and ESO. When mm -hmm. who, when do other people start coming on? Man, I want to say I want to say Joe came on sometime in December, if my memory serves me properly, and then uh, Austin and Andy from Ontario came on just a little bit after that. So at the most, besides the three hosts, he had four other people working under the Shuli uh, Network. He, Eso, myself, Joe, Austin, and Andy would, would have been five. Oh, so five. Oh, holy crap. A lot of people that you have to pay. There's a lot of people. So There's when a lot of people. When did you when did you leave? Like, I didn't even realize that you were gone, honestly. Like, so Pottstown happens. You were not at Pottstown. Tell us about I, I was guess. at Pottstown. Oh, you were? I was. Oh, I didn't realize that. Okay. Well, because I bring that up because, ladies and gentlemen, it is insane, but we are 105 days out from the Pottstown Massacre, and we're still talking about this thing. Poster Gate, day 105. Okay, I, I kind of forgot that you were at Pottstown. So let's, uh, let's talk about Pottstown for a second, like sure. leading up to Pottstown. Uh, was everything good? before Pottstown or did you have a sense that things were kind of ready to take a turn or did you like before the problem to that Pottstown like what was the overall feeling at the network before Pottstown happened uh well I can't speak for everybody but you know for myself at least I was definitely experiencing burnout um mm -hmm. we're doing so many shows just so many shows three four five shows a day six days a week, sometimes seven days a week. Uh, it's all hours of the day and all the time that you're not on air, you know, actually running StreamYard, you're, you're, you're pulling clips and you're editing video. And like, it's, it, it turned into way more of a time suck than, than I had originally intended it for it to be. And it was getting in the way of me working other jobs and sure. making the income that I needed to make for my family. So right. there was, there was a little bit of, uh, you know, there's a little bit of bitterness, I think, for myself going up there. Uh, before it had happened, um, there was a lot of, believe it or not, there was a lot of planning that went into the Pottstown show by myself and by other people on the team. Um, you know, I would assume it, it, so. It, yeah, it, it is what it is once we got up there, but 
Now, who who was in charge of the posters? So Under- there was one there there was one person uh, that was in charge of the posters. It wasn't me. You know, I'm not going to throw this person under the bus, but there was there was a single person that was responsible for the posters. Okay, because Shuli has, I believe, at one point Shuli took blame for the po- poster debacle and said, "Listen, it's all my fault. The whole poster thing. It was all my fault." Um, well, that's the and- right move. That's what a leader should do. Okay. But I'm I'm kind of getting that maybe it wasn't Shuli and it was someone else. But I just I thought maybe Shuli was blaming you possibly for the posters. Was I reading and something there? Or? I thought the same thing when I heard uh, I forget what show it was on. He was on a show talking about oh the posters. You know, there's a delay in the posters now because the person that was in charge of the posters isn't with us anymore. And at the time, I wasn't aware that anybody else had jump ship and i thought you know he's talking about me that's kind of weird because i had nothing to do with the posters and yes that was the bs show because i was watching that and that's the way i took it i thought they were talking about you also what uh so what the five <clears throat> producers were they cut or did someone leave before poster gate like was were there five producers at po- uh uh pots town all five of us were in pots town yeah oh wow I didn't realize that. Yep. Now, did you guys, because you're in Florida, did you have to get there by yourself or did they pay to have you up there? So going back to like DabbleCon back in February, I was flown up to Rochester for that. Um, I was, you know, I was put up in the the content house and we, you know, it, it was all taken care of. Uh, this time I was not bought a plane ticket. Uh, I actually hitched a ride with producer Joe who lives up the road from me, uh, rode up there. He had rented a car and we just made the drive. It was a long ass drive. Really? And, and so he had to pay for the rental car and gas and all that stuff. Yeah. That was never reimbursed. I don't, I don't know. I can't speak to that. Sure. But that's kind of crazy that they would not offer you a way to get up there, but it was always implied that, Hey, you're going to be at this event. Like we need you at this event. Yeah. Yeah. If Yeah. So I guess, did you ever bring up like, hey, who, how am I getting there? Kind of like, it, it almost sounds like a Ray DeVito situation where like Ray didn't know if he had a place to stay, but it was like, hey, did you ask? Like, But you actually work for the Shuli Network. So I would assume yeah, hey. it was it was kicked around, um, you know, in the run up. It, was, it wasn't until about maybe a week and a half before the show. And he was like, yeah, you guys are going to have to find your own way to come up here. There's just we can't get you up here. So really? We made we made arrangements, you know. We made it happen. Uh, got up there. Um, once we got up there, though, we were man. It was just a it's like a comedy of errors up there. We got so we we pull into town. We pulled into Bob's house, and uh, that's where Shuli was staying. And we gra- we grabbed Shuli, and we're like, you know, let's head over to the house. And come to find out, the house hadn't been booked. Um, the Airbnb hadn't been booked, so they. They went to book the Airbnb and then the Airbnb that they had planned on getting originally was not available. So they looked and they found another Airbnb. (laughs) They they booked that on the spot. Turns out that the house that we booked uh, did not have enough beds for everybody. Um, It did the night. It did two nights before when we first got into town. The night before the show, once everybody was in town, though, uh, we were a bed shy. And Julie was asking for volunteers to give up their bed, basically. Um, he holy crap unfortunately i unfortunately you know i gotta to say this that. is like so this is like hypocrisy police right because i mean didn't they give ray a bunch of shit for not having a place when he got out there and so you're saying you guys didn't even have a place when you got out there and you booked it when you got there am i understanding that right that'd be correct wow and then you that... didn't have enough beds either wow yeah well, now we know why Ray was not offered a place to stay. And wasn't it like an hour away or something from the venue? Yeah, it was a it was a little bit of a haul. We were in, uh, I think it was called Reading was the city that we were in. And yes, it was like, yeah, it was probably about 35, 40 minutes away from Pottstown. Is am. Uh, all right. So then Pottstown happens. Was there anything else at Pottstown you wanted to talk about? Um... I mean, just it was a it was just a disaster, man. <laughs> I, can't, yeah, well, I can't even say that enough. So that was that was my next question. Like, what was the overall feeling? I know you can't speak about everyone, but you can kind of get a sense. Like, was everyone pretty bummed out 
by Potsdam. Yeah, I think I think we were all pretty deflated after that show, the way it went. I mean, it, it turned out not being, you know, too bad at the end. I think everyone did have a good time. It was just it could have been run a lot smoother and a lot better. A lot of the planning that went into this show had to do with what equipment do we need? Like we tried to assess after DabbleCon and be like, hey, if we want to do this on our own, if we want to go into a venue that it doesn't have any kind of equipment and we want to do our own thing, you know, what do we need? So I was tasked with putting together a list. I was actually tasked with doing that two times. Uh, the first time was right after DabbleCon, you know, I was told put a list together, get all the stuff that we need for a live show and we'll send that over to Rustic Cuts and they'll, they'll cut us a check and we'll get everything that we need. So I put together a pretty comprehensive list. Um, I sent it over, nothing happened. Never really heard anything back about that. We got a little bit closer to Pottstown. I was asked again for another list, uh, a smaller list, less money. Um, sure. What is, what's pretty much the bare minimum of things that we need to make sure that this goes smoothly and that we have everything we need to, right. to A, broadcast the show, B, record the show, you know, every, and for everything to work smoothly. So built another list. Uh, and when I say build a list, I mean, these are like pretty, these are big Excel spreadsheets that with, you know, links to things to buy, prices, coupons, deals for sure. things. Like I spent, I spent a lot of time putting these together. Yeah, that's an, um, a, an insane amount of work to do. Did you reach out to Carl or anyone to kind of ask him what he, you know, I know you were at, uh, like you said, you were at DabbleCon, so you kind of got a sense of some of the things they use. But did you ever reach out to like Carl or anything like that? No, no. Okay. Nope. But yeah, no, that's a lot of work. And uh, I would think just as the network, you would want to invest in that kind of stuff if you do plan to, you know, do more live shows. I personally don't know why any of these things do live shows. Uh, Carl, Carl, it makes sense. He has the audience and stuff. But uh, I mean, overall, these these live events, they just seem to be more of a headache than it's worth. But I don't know. I've never put on a live show and I have no plans to ever do yeah. that. So I'll give so that all between to, between okay. all the between all the prep work that went into the show. And then, you know, the way that the show actually went, our Uncle Rico show, we never even really got to the clips that I made. Right. Um, and I had, I had spent a good bit of time putting that package together, you know, more than I would normally spend on a show just to make it special. Um a hundred percent. It it definitely sounds like it is a full time job being a producer for the Shuli Show. That's why I was so curious how it's possible, because yeah, a lot a lot of you guys are married. You got kids, and 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 I can't imagine that the money money is there. Um, but uh, like like you said, at first you weren't signing up for that. Did, when, so the money always fluctuated, right? You never got paid the same every month. So when I first came on, I was paid one rate. We'll call that, you know, the first rate. Right. And every month I was paid that rate up until April, April 22nd, uh, which was the the last pay period before my last pay period. Okay. So okay. It, it was the pay period before we went to Pottstown. I was bumped up. You know, Shuli told me, hey, you're bumped up. Like you're, you're the guy. Um, basically doubled what I was making. Still not a ton of money but it was significantly more than before sure um so yeah i, was, I mean 100 you know, raise is is insane that's yeah, nice i was happy with that you know sure. being told that you know you're the guy we're going to count on you going forward and that was that was great you know she, you know surely says that i'm this unreliable guy that can't communicate and you know i don't know why he's bumping me up and you know telling me i'm the guy so yeah and you definitely was, seem to be the guy and then all of a sudden, Joe was the guy. So what happened after Pottstown? So Joe kind of fell into place uh, before Pottstown. I would say it was after DabbleCon because when we came back from DabbleCon, uh, according to Shuli, I disappeared. When in actuality, I was having a baby. Um, you know, they, they the guys, they all knew about that. Everyone I had no idea you were to, trans. To take some time off. Of you. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> Congratulations. So how long did you take off when you disappeared, according to Shuli? A week. Oh. Maybe for the for the birth of a child. How oh. dare you? Yeah, it was pretty it was pretty selfish. All right. So you take off a week for the birth of your child and you come back and what? So I come back to uh an, there was another producer who had left at that time while I was out. 
So I don't know if Shuli is confused over which producer left, um, but it wasn't me. It was there was another producer who left. He was gone from pretty much after DabbleCon until maybe a couple of weeks before Pottstown. Okay. And then after Pottstown, was he still on? After Pottstown, uh, I was only with the guys for a few more days. Uh, my last day with them was on May 22nd. Um, I did a show in the morning, the BS show. Got paid that afternoon. You know, 21st to 21st is the pay cycle for YouTube. Got paid back to the original rate that I was paid uh, when I first came on. And, you know, get a text from Shuli saying, hey, give me a call. So I give him a call and he says, hey, you know, I'm sorry that it's not the full amount. You know, things are tight after Pottstown. You already know because we didn't get the equipment and stuff that we needed. Like, I'll make it up to you on the first. I'll get I'll get you on the first. Basically, when the Patreon money comes through. So I said, all right. And they had it out of the coffin that night. I didn't show up for that one. And, you know, I've got all sorts of other things going on in my life, too. There's there's family drama. There's health issues. There's all sorts of stuff going on in my life. Sure. And, you know, things that require my attention a lot more than doing something for, you know, less than I worth right so did you know when you were at Pottstown that you were going to be leaving nine days later or did something or was it i had a, i thing? had a feeling i had a feeling you know i think i even said to somebody at Pottstown, like while we were in the middle of the disaster i said this is the shit that's going to make me walk away right. like, i'm not having i'm not having fun anymore this isn't fun <laughs> and that does kind of sound like are you clipping your nails no, I'm sorry. I got a pen in my hand. I'll put it. Oh, down. okay. Oh no, I was just curious. <laughs> I was thinking about that the whole time, but I was like, how many nails could he possibly have? <laughs> so I was like, I'm sure it'll stop. Um, okay. So you leave. You leave nine days after Pottstown, and at this point, Shuli owes you some money. You believe Shuli owes you money, right? Well, I mean, I, I believe that because he told me that he was going to pay me up to the amount that he told me he was going to pay me for. I mean, he says that I disappeared. You know, I, I, I did, did disappear, but it was after I wasn't paid for the period I was supposed to be paid for. You know, right. I don't, I don't know who, who sticks around to jobs they're just not getting paid at. I know. Of course not. No, of course not. Uh, so where are we now? Like, have you talked to Shuli since he heard that you were coming on this show? Nope. Uh, I haven't reached out to him. He hasn't reached out to me. It's just uh, incommunicado right now. Interesting. Yep. OJ, do you have any questions? Yeah, there was a couple things. Um, Shuli mentioned that he was calling you all the, every day, I think he said, when your child was born. Is, was, was that true? Were you guys in communication uh, while we you were, were gone? We were in communication, but it was, definitely wasn't by phone calls every day. Um, I mean, I looked back at my phone logs and, you know, I think the first phone call I got after the baby was born was on, I think it was on March 17th. Um, but, we, you know, there was text, there was texting, you know, there was, I, I would pop into and out of the stream yard for, you know, meetings and stuff just to say what's up to everybody. And it wasn't like I was just, you know, totally MIA. Chris Mack has a question. Were you expected to be on that out of the coffin show that night? It's not great to no call, no show, obviously, but the money stuff isn't really great either, though Shuli did seem to offer an excuse. Yeah, uh, yeah, I was supposed to be there in hindsight. Probably not the best move, but it is what it is. I'll own it. Uh, my other question was about, you mentioned rustic cuts. They were going to pay for the equipment. Um did you guys ever get any money from Rustic Cuts for that or anything? Or how what what is the deal with Rustic Cuts? So Rustic, I don't know. It's a good question. I mean, I'm really kind of in the dark as to what the relationship with Rustic Cuts actually looks like between Shuli and Rustic Cuts. Um there there may be something there. You know, I can't say that I've seen any material evidence of it. Okay. Uh, what was that? Uh, what was the total? I don't know if you want to get into specifics, but what was the total of that first list of equipment in ballpark? The first list that was made was a pretty big one. I mean, it was probably, I think it was six or seven thousand dollars, but it was that included, you know, PCs that were needed to run the shows. You know, um, it, it was there was a lot of stuff on there, so sure. 
Absolutely. Um, the second the second list was a lot less. The second list came in on the high end because I had it budgeted out like based on like these are the things that we want, these are the things that we need. This is the bare minimum. So I think right. at the most it would have been like twenty four hundred, and at the bare minimum it was like seven hundred. So we're not talking a ton of money. No, um, it's crazy. So uh, what are you doing now? Just so right now, yeah, I'm working. Uh, I'm working. Just not with Julie. You know, I don't want to. I don't want to put too much of my private life out there. You know, yeah, Shuly, no, no, Shuly no. Can, Shuly can. I mean, he's threatened it, so he can talk about what I'm doing now if he yeah, wants. Yeah, I did find that odd. Uh, that was the approach that he took. It was kind of yeah. It seemed pretty threatening about you being a private guy and doing this to yourself. And why is he doing this? And I found that I found that odd. Do you think that uh, maybe he was? pretty nervous about what you were going to say today and uh you know do you are there things you're not telling us maybe that maybe would make him scared Uh, i mean there's you know i'm like i said in the beginning i'm not coming on here i really don't want to bash anybody it's you know i i do you know deep you know i care about these guys you know i worked with them for a long time i spent a lot of time with them um, you know, and Julie has taken care of me in the past, you know, I've had problems, I've reached out and he's, you know, he's helped me out. So, you know, Bob, Bob is great. Bob, you know, yeah. Mike, I mean, all, all the guys, you know, everybody, it sucks. Kink, it sucks that it came to this. Kinky Loco asks, did he not show because he wasn't paid or was he not paid because he didn't show? Probably went both ways. Interesting. Uh, what are your thoughts on Shuli in general now? You know, uh, I, I, I don't know. It's hard to say, man. I, like I said, I've got love for these guys. You know, I've, I've been entertained by these guys for a long time and you know, there's just, it's just, it's a, it's just a rough place to be in. It's a shitty spot to be in. Do you how want- many shows, how many shows were you in charge of, uh, like, I guess at your peak, like how many shows do you think you were uh, running for them? Yeah. Did like all five producers have to be there for every show? Pretty much. Yeah. Some of the side shows they were running with less than the full team, but for the, all the flagship shows, the miserable men, uncle Rico show, the BS show, it's, it's like all hands on deck type situation. Uh, do you want to take some calls if people want to call in and ask well, you some questions? Sure. Yeah, and then maybe before that, we have some super chats. I think we should. All right, let's do uh, let's do the them. super chats. Uh, oh, this guy's mad at me because I don't know how to pronounce his last name. Uh, Jason Fusco, Fusco. I think that's how you say one ninety nine. Where is Tuki, motherfucker? Tuki is sleeping on his trombone where he sleeps at night. Uh, Tuki will not be here today. Tuki has been very, very busy. Uh, AI Ray, thank you for the five euros. My boss didn't pay the guy who left work. Now I'm worried. Wondering if not getting paid is our network's exit bonus policy. I think you'll be okay, Ray. Uh, Safety first, thank you for the 199. Tukey has overtaken Bedabbler's popularity. Yes, I know. Everyone wants to see Tukey. Fuck (laughs) Tukey. I was here first. General Ocean Wolf, the bad guy of the Tukey World Order. El Harible Heenan, the greatest manager and announcer ever. ever. OJ Monsoon, I see you too. T-W-O for life. Tukey World Order. T-W-O. All right, we have a call. I'm going to take a call because this caller keeps calling. So... uh... Hey, what's up, man? You're on the air with uh, Stut Joe Debo. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. I got a couple questions. Um, five producers. Yeah, five producers. Yeah, five producers. They still couldn't get the show correct. What show? Hot uh yeah, uh I don't I don't know. Well uh, Studjo, what do you think was the biggest problem with uh Pottstown? Just no 
pre-planning or? The problem was that none of the five of us, you know, we all are familiar with video editing, it's with StreamYard, with online streaming. Sure. None of us are really audio engineers. So we got put in front of a, a mixing board that was, you know, a little bit above all of our pay grades. And there was nobody there that was willing to step up, uh, come out of the green room and help us out, you know, get things together. Someone who knew what was going on. There were a lot of people there that, that do. So they just kind of hung us out there. I, I just it completely exposes truly in my opinion and, uh kevin brennan's 100 percent right truly's a hack and uh you know he treats his employees like garbage but he sits there and uh on his high uh, perch and uh complains about everybody else you burn a guy you don't pay him i mean th this is just uh this is shocking you know really uh i'm glad he came on and uh in my opinion exposed the hack uh to show you know he really is a hack Thank you for your call, bud. Appreciate it. Uh, if you want to call in, the number is 973-440-9770 to talk to Stut Joe Depot. Uh, we'll get to the super chats in a second. Caller, you're on the air. Hello? Uh, hello? Hello? Hey, what's up? Who's this? Uh, I... Uh, don't uh, you know who this is, B Dabber? Don't say my name. I don't want nothing to do with Studge. I just want to ask him why do you hate the HWO? Goodbye. I By the way, know, I don't know who that caller was. Obviously, they wanted to remain anonymous, Studge Depot. But why do you dislike the HWO, whatever that is? I don't know uh, well, how anyone could that, get that impression after I've turned myself into a robotic Jake Hudson. There you go. <laughs> W-O. Uh, I hope that answered your question, caller. Uh, what else? Uh, okay, uh, Super Chat. What was that last Super Chat? Uh, Blinky Jedi, thank you for the 199. Vinny takes Chinese HGH and weak testosterone. Yes, the weekly reminder from uh, Blinky Jedi. Thank you. Caller, you're on the air with Stutcho Depot. <clears throat> hey, guys. Love you. Love the show. Love you. You. Stuck to people wanted to ask you this uh little you coming out now against Julie about the pay stuff. This came up this week, or at least to my understanding, came up this week. Is it just a coincidence that this came up with Kevin and Bob's pay dispute? Or I would was this I'd say absolutely not. I mean, I would say it's the one thing that probably made me speak up more than anything else is the hypocrisy of the whole situation i was sitting there listening to the show and listening to shuli bash kevin for not paying bob on bob's way out and i made a comment in the chat about it and this is all blown up from that one comment i made in the chat what was the comment you made in the chat Thanks. i think i said bob i know how it feels to not get paid on the way out oh okay i think all i, I said uh, yeah i think i remember seeing that yeah then shuli somehow turned that into you calling him an asshole and um I, I yeah, it, escal it escalated uh, pretty quickly. Yeah. Big Papa, so where is Shuli? How come we are only getting one side? We have sent Shuli the link, but he's obviously too too much of a coward to show his face. Uh, we have more Super Chats. Uh, super J chats. JT, thank you for the 199. Is it true Shuli Network is a front for Scientology? <laughs> mm, can't confirm or deny that. All right, we are going to take a call from down uh, under Australia. You are on the air. Hello, greetings. I have a question for Stud Joe Depot. Sure. Uh, will there be, or is there? Do you think there's a final solution to the Shuli question? <laughs> uh, I can't speak to that. Unbelievable. <laughs> That's horrible. I know exactly what you're trying to get at. <laughs> and yes, apparently there is, but it failed in the 1940s. I don't think it's a very good solution, but they did try. Uh, Super Chats. Dr. Steve, thank you for the $2. Enjoyed working with Stud Joe Depot at DabbleCon. Was awesome. Thanks, Dr. Steve. Love you, bud. Dr. Steve is awesome. Thank you, Dr. Steve. It was great to see Dr. Steve. Dr. Steve was the voice of DabbleCon. I thought it was yes. fantastic. There's a fucked fact. 
I yes. met Dr. Steve in the bathroom of all places at DabbleCon. Oh, no. Yes. You guys are blowing each other. Yes. I knew it. Carlos Danger, thank you for the $10. I'm confused over the time period for which Stut Joe is owed money. What impact did Joe have on the other producers? And what was the pecking order? Ray vindicated. So the time period that I'm uh, in question here is April 21st to May 21st. And then the payout that came to me on May 22nd, you know, along with a phone call saying that it wasn't the full amount. And I was to get more, you know, this is the same month as Pottstown as well. And, you know, there was no, there was no compensation for Pottstown, the Pottstown show for the producers. Like the, the, we got nothing, you know, I, I got to had- sleep on a, I got to sleep on a couch and I got paid nothing. Yeah, that really is, uh, does sound like a nightmare. It's like, Hey, you have to come work at this thing. Uh, You live in Florida. The event is in Pennsylvania. We're not going to get you here. Uh, When you do get here, you're not going to really have any accommodations. Oh, yeah, and you're doing this all for free. Oh, and they drove from Florida. then, Then when they get there, they have to drive 45 minutes to get to the place they're staying. Right. Hey, oh, oh, great. We're done with our 20-something hour ride. Oh, no, you're not. We have to still go another 45 minutes to the venue. Why didn't everyone... Yeah, that's that's crazy being so far away from the venue. But uh yeah, I guess that's what happens when you don't book the B and B or whatever. Airbnb. Afro King Virgin, you lover. Two dollars. Great job with KC. Evil Vince to be attacked because of me. Yes, apparently evil Vin- or Vince the evil lawyer was in KC's show harassing him last night. I don't know. KC seemed to know what was going on. I can't pay attention to the chat. While I'm either on shows or doing shows, so I apologize. Caller, you're Hello? on the air. Yes, mystery caller. What did you want to say to? By Stunt the way, Blue? yeah. Um, by the way, thank you for taking my call, Hurry Blay. What's up? Anytime, anonymous. Uh, my question person. is, thank you, because I, I'm trying to stay anonymous because I'm I am part of the Shuli Network. I'm trying to keep. Yes, we have no idea who this is, Jake. Go on. Yes, we know. I have no idea who you are, caller. Don't worry, you will not. I will not dox you. Yeah, um, but you know, you were you were very uh, you were very nice to me until like uh, at Pottstown, and then you were a piece of shit to me. Why? Who? Stut Joe? What, what, what did you I do to you, Jake? Yeah. What did I do? You basically you were you 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 were you were you were uh, agreeing with one of my enemies, Michaela. Oh, you the, are also the, the evil you, Michaela. But here's the I thing: have no idea who Michaela is. No but here, does. Uh, this is no one does. What are you saying? What She's are you a saying? Cunt from, uh, from Arizona. But uh, I also want to say, I just also want to say, by the way, B Dabbler is better. By the way, I had B Dabbler on the show. B Dabbler is better than Tukey. B Dabbler, World Order. Thank Goodbye. you. Thank you. Finally, someone has said it. Thank you, mystery caller. I wish I knew who you were so I could send you big bundles of money. But since I don't know who you are, I can't do that. But I will take your compliments. So thank you. Who the fuck is Michaela? I, I, this no is idea. the first time I've ever heard <laughs> someone bring up someone named Michaela. I, I have absolutely no idea. Uh, if you want to call in to ask Stut Joe Depot your questions, 973-440-9770. Uh, I think we'll, you know, we'll take up about maybe 15 more minutes of your time uh and then we'll go and uh do whatever dr steve thank you for the five dollars i was an audio engineer before medical school you should have had me there stut joe depot damn it ps tukey rules no he does not dr steve (laughs) yeah wish you'd have been there dr steve things have probably went a lot smoother dr steve it seems like all you had to do was drive yourself up there and then get in and yes (laughs) you could have been there just like stut joe uh, he had to get himself there. Mike Cuts, thank you for the two dollars. Wake up, white people! Yes, everyone, wake up! It's Saturday morning, and it's be dabbling live where Stut Joe speaks about his time at the Shuli Network. Um, so I got I'm going back to Carlos Danger because he just text messaged me and said, uh, he I, skipped I, he skipped answering my Joe question about impact. Oh, okay, uh, what impact so- did Joe? have on the other producers and what is the pecking order rave indicated so as far as the pecking order i don't think there was any clearly defined pecking order ever uh as far as the producers go iso was at the top for a while and then you know everyone else was kind of 
below him. So mm-hmm. below him. Yeah. Is Issa below Poo him. there? As far as I know, yes. I haven't heard anything to the contrary. I know there was one other person that left, and he doesn't want me talking about him, so I won't. Linky Jedi, thank you for the 199. Does Studjo think the number six million is high? Uh, it's a pretty big number, almost an unbelievably big number. It's a gigantic number. And I don't know what it has anything to do with what we're talking about. Caller, you're on the air. Hey, oh, this is the quad father. Uh, I was just curious. Uh, so everybody, all the producers make like two grand a month. Uh, what? How many hours a week are are you talking? Where did you uh, hear two you grand think, a like, month? Where did you hear two grand a month? He never gave like actual numbers. Uh, I think that's what Kevin Brennan said. That's the numbers I've heard from his show. Like, ah, Joe makes two grand a month, and he probably doesn't even get paid. Something along those lines. D- Studio, before you answer that, do you know if all the producers were paid equally, or are some producers paid more? I don't know what anybody else was paid except for myself, so I can't speak to that. And then Quadfather, what was your exact question? Oh, how many hours do you think you worked a week for for I would say probably in the forty to fifty range. I mean, I did the yeah. I did the math for the month the, the period that I'm you know claiming here, April twenty first to May twenty first. I was on thirty eight shows. Uh, in the green room for running in StreamYard. Uh, eight of those were Uncle Rico shows that I had made content packages for outside of running shows. So, I mean, it's a, it's a lot of work. Yeah, it definitely sounded like a full-time job. That's why I was curious how he could afford to pay all these guys. Quadfather, did you have anything else? Um, yeah, I just, uh, I'm sorry. He got shoe lead out in the middle of nowhere, left, left hanging there. Uh, but uh, if you're doing what you love, is it really work? I mean, that's kind of the question, really. Well, that's part of the reason why I think I left is because at first I was having fun doing it. And then there's the the, the hours and the hours and the hours and the hours. It just, you know, you get burned out. He's got a family. He's got a supportive family. Ah, uh, family shmamly. I still challenge you I got, to elect. I got a lot of stuff. Go, yeah. I, I got a lot like, of stuff going on outside the Dabbleverse, so. Yeah, there's right. a whole shitload of stuff going on. Like my challenge. Whole world to you, out there, guys. Whole world. My challenge to you, Quad Father, to a leg wrestling contest competition. Yeah, my crippled legs will crush you. Anytime, anywhere. Goodbye. Thank you for the call, buddy. Um, so I know you're not talking numbers, but um, so the 40 hours a week that you were putting in and what whatever the, the amount was you were getting paid, was it a sustainable income for to take care of your family if you just wanted to do just that? For just that, no. No, no it has I to be can't imagine. Like it. it was, it, it was a, a, a pretty low number. But meanwhile, you're taking up the time of a full-time job, and yeah, it just yeah. It can't work. Uh, caller, you're on the air. You know who this is, B Dabbler. I have no idea who you are, Mystery Caller. Please, we would like to keep your anonymity safe. So please. By the way, yeah. Uh, by the by the way, you know. By the way, he is is like, you know, I ne- I I am on Team Stut Joe Depot. I'm on Team Stut Joe Depot. Why? By the way, this is Jake. Uh, this is because here's the thing. I know I know how hard you guys work in the production. Thank you, you. you did you did some great stuff. Thank you. I'm gonna be very hey, I wasn't talking to you, V Dabbler. I was talking to Stut Joe Depot. Sorry, mystery caller. I just want to also say this. Did you you know Shuli said that Shuli said that you left during before uh uh at Rochester. No. I remember you when you were there. Yeah, but he said he only left well, for a week because he was having a kid. But surely, Jake is right. Surely did his memory was that Stutcho did Rochester and then disappeared after that. No, there is another producer that disappeared yeah. after Rochester for a yeah. couple months. It wasn't me. Oh, so he just had the wrong guy. Yeah. All right. Thank you for your call, mystery caller. Hey, by the way, when are we going to get El Harible World Order shirt? Uh, I don't know. It doesn't really roll off the tongue like Tukey World Order or Hudson World Order or whoever. Dang you it. 
All right. All right. Or OJ World Order. Good night. Right. Goodbye. <laughs> Maniac. Uh, did we have more super chats? Super, super chats. chats. Donna Gleetow, thank you for the 199. So good to finally see OJ's face. Yes. A chubby little cabbage patch face. I just want to pinch his cheeks. I want to slap his face. There was a kid who looked just like you in third grade, and I slapped his face in music class just because I wanted to see his cheeks jiggle. And I feel horrible now, so I'm very sorry to that kid. <laughs> I hope you're watching, and I hope you hear me and accept my apology. <laughs> my dad was so mad at me. Uh, Jason Fusco, thank you for the 199. Where's Ralph, motherfucker? Ralph <clears throat> is uh, not here. Ralph is... Uh, in Maui, supporting the relief it's effort. It's a swap shop. It's oh. a swap shop. I got a couple of items to put up for sale there. I got a load of manure. This is uh, not a swap shop. Truck load. This is not swap it's shop, a, Myrtle. It's human. Myrtle, this is not. It's human manure, though. I'm, this is not. I'll tell you that. It's, 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 this is a good quality. Just gonna, Myrtle doesn't shop. And then I got me a, <laughs> I got me a chair. Myrtle, this oh, is a swap me, shop. But thank you for your call. <laughs> this is not swap shop, Myrtle. We don't care that you have things to sell. We're trying to hear Stut Joe Depot's story about working with the Shuli Network. But thank you for your thank you for your call. Uh fucking Florida. What up, yo? Is this Chad Zumok? Hello. Hey, I was wondering how much uh, all the anti shuli sentiment online affected the funds for Stutjo Depot. That's so, a great question. Um, a lot, a lot. I mean, it, it, it takes your toll day after day uh, being accused of stealing content from Reddit, you know, when I know that's not happening. I mean, right. It, it was before I came on board, but after I came on board, everything that was done on the Uncle Rico show for months and months and months and months and months. And months you know, the whole period that we were growing the network was, you know, was coming out of my, my library. So it takes, it takes a little bit of a toll. Yeah, I would imagine. And then you got, and then you got people, you got people out there that are just like, you know, they hate Shuli with, you know, every ounce of their being and any way that they can get to Shuli, they'll, they'll take. And that, you know, falls going after people like me and other people on the team. Yes. The internet is, a yeah, there's cruel, a lot of that is a cruel dark. It is what it, it, is, it is, what it is, you know, Try not to let it affect you too much, but if I said it didn't affect you, I'd be lying. Yeah, and I mean, quite honestly, I mean, if people are always shitting on my show and stuff, it would be very hard to keep going and want to do it, but I'm sure that it will eventually happen. And then I'll just quit. Uh, did Is there a super chat from Melton? Because he's going off about how he super chatted and it charged him, but it never came up, and now his oh. app is all fucked up. No, he, he thinks I sent him a virus or something. <laughs> I didn't send you a virus. I can't do that. What is this? No, I it's see not nothing. me. I'm doing a show. How can I send you a virus? What is is? <laughs> I can't do a Melton. That's the first time I actually tried to mel do Melton. Uh, Sir Vasev, thank you for the two dollars. Looking forward to Tuki Super Chat show tomorrow. No, there is no. Tuki show tomorrow, even though Tuki's plans did fall through, but Tuki doesn't have enough time to put on a show. Maybe Tuki will do Wendy's show tomorrow night, though. She invited uh, Tuki to do Wendy's show tomorrow night at the same time. So I'm thinking I'll do that, and then hopefully we can get people over to Wendy's channel. So if you want to see Tuki tomorrow, I think he might do Wendy's show, but be aware. Uh, Wendy does like 10 hour live streams. Tuki will not be there for the full 10 hours, so get there early. Um, all right, any more questions uh, on the Super Chats or anything like that? No. No, nothing like that. Guys, if you want to call in, uh, we are almost at the hour mark. If you want to call in and ask uh, Stut Joe Depot a question, give us a call, 973-440-9770. Um, so I'm assuming, I mean, there's no, like, going back. You're not going to work for these guys again, most likely. Even if you do get uh, what you feel you're owed, like right, you probably want to just watch. Yeah, your probably hands. not. I mean, I spent I spent such a long time over there working for you know less money than you know I needed. So 
the savings has been drained. Um, you know, the emergency fund is, you know, don't want to sure. touch that. So sure. Where is Shuli? Shuli, where are you? You have the link, you coward. Show yourself. Uh all right. Uh, I'm going to take uh, another call here. I have no idea who this is. Mystery caller, you are on the air. Hey, what's up? Who is this? It's Jacob. Oh, Jake, you're here. Finally. Where have you been all day? Uh, by the way, uh, now since we're since we're getting rid of the since we're getting rid of the um, the person, I just want to say that I got a big news right now. I'm at two thousand nine hundred in. I think 992 watch hours. I just need eight more watch hours. Oh, shut up. Who cares? No, that's not big news. That's big news in no one's life, even your life. That's not big news. <laughs> go to Jake Husden's channel and go support Jake. Go watch some of his crap. Caller, you're on the air. I want to ask uh, Stutcho. I want to ask Stutcho. Surely, uh, I don't know if he's still there at this point, or maybe if he talks to uh, Trailer Park uh, producer Joe. He was uh, always saying, uh, give the chats for the uh, boys in the back, the shirtless boys in the back. Did anybody ever in the back actually see any of that chat money, or is that just another truly being a truly? Uh, I was gone by the point they did that show, so I can't speak to that. I don't know. I didn't get any of that money, but I wasn't I wasn't did there you, around you working at that time to get any. So I got no claim to that money. Any of the producers you still talk to? Anybody? No, I haven't. Not on a daily basis. No. Uh, I have someone. All right. So basically, no. Go ahead. Uh, real quick, the entire Shuli network uh, is, is is a hack. I mean, he burns his employees. I mean, could Kevin Brennan be any more correct about this? I'm I'm, I'm being honest. Look what they did to Ray. The, the the abuse that Ray went through because he, he was really cool about the entire bed situation. This poor guy drives on his own dime from Florida all the way up there. And they don't even have a, a, a room for them. That's what bothers me the most about this story is having people that you expect to work your event, having to pay to get themselves up there and then literally having no place for them to stay. I mean, I just don't get these live things. They Thank seem you. like way more trouble than they're worth. Go ahead, caller. Stucho, did you have to pay any part of that money for that B and B, that Airbnb? I didn't. No. Did he buy you guys food? Did he take anything at all? Did he give you? Did he give you a bottle of water? Anything? Or is everything <laughs> completely out of your pocket? No, he bought he bought us a couple of meals. There were cheeseburgers. Remember, Ray took too many. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, did he buy? Did, did Truly buy you the cheeseburgers, or were they the free cheeseburgers at the event? Oh my god! <laughs> Do you have any other questions, caller? Um, no, just uh, Truly's a Truly, and uh, you guys do a great job with this channel and uh, great show today. Thanks, dude. Uh, I had someone leave a voicemail and I saw, uh, what the, the transcript of it was. It says, is Mike Morris actually fat? <laughs> Speaking of which, hello, Stevie Lou. Oh shit. It's dark in here. Sorry about that. Mm. I was at the gym guys. I'm sorry. I'm late. I was just doing some sit-ups running a couple of miles. Yes. We were all at the gym. Uh, hold on one second, Stevie Lou, before I, you get your questions. <laughs> Caller, you're on the air. Yeah, I just want to say, you know, Julie's a Julie, but he, he can't really help it. I guess Aaron M. Holt was right, you know. Oh, that's true. Do it's you, just the way he is. Do you feel the same as Aaron M. Holt, uh, Stuttering Joe, that it's not really Julie's fault? I mean, he is Jewish after all. No comment. All right. Thank you, caller. Uh, how are you, Stevie Lou? Good, good, good. I, I'm great. Just uh, real quick, I, I missed the... Uh, the last caller because I was doing some more sit-ups. Uh, sure. <laughs> there's those rumors out. And, and first of all, sometimes when you ask questions, it doesn't mean you're actually either taking you know taking a side. So I just want to throw sure. those out there in right. advance. I want to cover my ass. But rumors all over Reddit and elsewhere, fake views, fake this, inflated numbers. 
Can you or are you willing to talk about Stutcho Depot, whether any of that is true, that the godfathers of podcasting inflate their numbers and bots and et cetera, et cetera? I, I've never seen it. I've never seen any evidence of it from the inside. So I'm not saying it's not happening, but I, I never saw any evidence of that. All the, all the numbers in the back end, you know, appeared legit from what I can understand. Caller, like? you're on. Oh, sorry. sorry. Caller, you're on the air. Hey, what's going on, guys? Nothing much. What did you want to ask, Stud Joe? Uh, I just wanted to point out, you know, I never thought Sui was funny. And I think this just proves the point of how much a dick he is. I mean, Stud Joe was making great content, fantastic content, truly sucking him in, paid him no money, made him work full time hours. And now he's fucking him over. Nobody made me. Nobody made me work full time hours. I mean, I did all this voluntarily on my own volition. You know, was in there a pro- probably Stucho. a bad decision? Was there a promise yeah. of like more money to come, or was it just all based on channel growth? Or, um, you know, there was always a kind of mysterious. Hey, don't worry. One day we're going to get this big check from Rustic Cuts, and everybody's going to get taken care of. And kind of all the any worries that anyone had about money were assuaged by, you know, don't worry, there's a big check from Rustic Cuts that's going to come soon, and we're all going to get paid, and we're all going to be sitting pretty. So, and that check obviously never came. No. Toucan Sam, thank you for the four ninety nine. <clears throat> Studio Depot, we've had our differences. Hope we can put that behind us. Who is in charge of blocking chatters on the sh- uh, Shuli? Is that Shuli Network? I think it was a bill speak TSN. The Shuli Network. Reach out if I can help with anything. Uh, is this the same guy that spent the last four months trying to dox me? <laughs> Interesting. Probably. Weird. Uh, caller, you're on the air. Thanks. Uh, question for Stucho Depot. Um, Shuli claims that there was a lack of communication at one point. Essentially, you were hard to reach or ghost to him or something along those lines. Uh, comment on that, please. Uh, I mean, yeah, the way that I left, I mean, I just kind of stopped showing up. So it's, you know, it's, it wasn't ideal. I'm not going to claim that I did the right thing there. Uh, probably should have, you know, communicated that better. I'll, I'll own that. Toucan That's Sam, fair. thank you for the 199 justice for Stut Joe Tipo F. Shuley with an E. Why'd you put an E at the end? You know how to spell Shuley. More emph- emphasis on the F. Shuli. Uh, Stevie Lou, did you have any more questions? I yeah, the other of- thing I wanted to ask was, uh, you know, producer Joe has been crucified uh, in what has to be an organized campaign, obviously, to, to bring out his past. Uh, did his arrival fuck with the morale? Was he easy to work with? Where do you think that the anti-Joe sentiment came from? I uh, I don't know. I, he 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 does tend to rub a lot of people the wrong way. Um, you know, for whatever reason that might be, I can't really say. But you know, working with him, it it, it got difficult, kind of to work in a situation where the first product is the best product, and that was kind of the the atmosphere behind the scenes. Is it like, hey, if we're going to create something, the first person to get their idea in. Like, that's what we're going with. And, you know, say what you will about Joe. He he does work his ass off and he, you know, he 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 does things quickly. And, you know, a lot of times he would beat me to the punch on projects or on a, a, a video or a clip or a, a Photoshop. And, you know, it, I, 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 I like to put I, I put a lot of time. I put a lot of work into things that I do. Uh, I try to make them perfect, uh, and I try not to settle for anything less than that. So, trying to compete with somebody that you know is just firing things off left and right, it's it's pretty difficult. Oh, that's interesting. So there was a competition. There wasn't like an organized effort. Like someone didn't tell you every day. There wasn't a morning meeting where all right, you're doing this. What do you have from last night? There was nothing like that. Yeah, there was stuff that was, that's delineated. That's uh you know, given out, but then there's just stuff like, okay, this needs to be done. That needs to be done. And basically whoever gets it done first, that's what we go with. Caller, you're on the air. Hello, Reedway. It's Nas Redna. Hey, Nas Redna. What's going on, dude? Nothing much. I want to ask him, since he was a uh, Howard super fan, 
Do you think that Shuli is kind of taking these super fans and grooming them to work for free? Ooh, interesting, basically, interesting question. I, I, I don't know. It's hard to say, man, because, you know, at the end of the day, I was there on my own accord. So. Yeah, you definitely, like I was be, you definitely. You know, I wasn't being um, for, I wasn't being forced to work, but, you know, I was working and I would like to be compensated for the work that I did. Yeah, it's, it's kind of like your Steve Gorilla. You do you do own some responsibility in it. But. Uh, thanks for the call, El Haribe. And. They go power. You. you called me. I didn't call you, but thank you for the call. <laughs> uh, Blinky Jedi, thank you for the 199. Is Stut Joe vaxxed? Were Bray Wyatt or Terry Funk? <laughs> you don't have to answer that. <laughs> I don't know why people are asking medical uh, thing. Uh, Chris Scape, thank you for the 499. We demand Tukey, TWO. T- W-O. Tomorrow, 10 p.m. No. T- well, he might be on tomorrow, 10 p.m. on Wendy's channel because Wendy asked him to go on there. And my plans did fall through for tomorrow. So technically, I could have done a Tukey suit, but I have no time now. Uh, people what they want. I know. I know. I know. But I need to give certain people in my household what they want as well because you know how it is. Uh, how is your house? Is everything okay? I, I have a plumber. A plumber's on the way. Yeah, yesterday was kind of nuts at the end. Did a end pipe of MLC. really burst? It's a long story. Uh, it, there was two things going on, but yeah, there is a. It wasn't rushing water, but it's okay. got to be dealt with. There was definitely okay. there was a puddle of water. Okay. Not too bad. Because uh, El Harible is not the greatest handyman, and one time El Harible was drilling into the wall, and he was like, "Why is this just not going?" And he was just going. He's going, and then all of a sudden he heard. And water just sprayed right in El Harible's face. And all El Harible could do was think to slam the closet door and just hear all this water constantly hitting the door <laughs> and filling the closet with water and panicking because he was in a condo. And I don't know how to shut the water off. Oh, my God. A fucking idiot. Fucking idiot. I, I, totally, so I, exper- totally I assumed that. you were having the whole same issue. Uh, I had water. given up by the end of that uh, that stream. I was just like, my life is over for various reasons. But uh, can, can I ask, and maybe this is uh, too inside baseball, but Stucho, in terms of payment, like what entity paid you? I know when I, I have a, I don't have a business, but I'm an employee, but I have to get 1099, 1099 submitted uh, for anybody who makes over 600 bucks. Did you have to do any of that? Like how formal is the corporation or LLC or whatever it is that was paying you? So all of the accounts uh, paid out, I, you know, as far as I could tell directly to Shuli and then Shuli would Venmo us payment. What did it say? I was, like I was just never, from I was never, Shuli? I was, or? I was never 1099. Yeah, just from Shuli. Okay. Is 1099 a thing that you get at the end of the year though? Or are you supposed to get like 1099? I don't, I never know this kind of crap. Like, do you get one 1099 at the end of the year, or do you get a 1099 for every time you get paid? I know what I do is I, I have, I, my business gives it out uh, in advance. We let the people know, hey, you're freelance. You're going to, you you have to fill out this information if you want to, but it can go either way, I believe. Oh, okay. Yeah. I, I just, I don't know anything about that because I pay no one. Yeah. I was going to say, Jesus, someone's doing well. Thank you uh where are we at we caught up with uh things uh johnny 1.0 thank you for the two dollars hashtag free producer joe desk pop salute i don't know what any of that means but thank you much appreciated uh baby satchmo thank you for becoming a member and thank you for the five dollars for that creep ken Otto. if he is still trying to keep cancer fkb no he is not. And if you want to donate to Ken Otto, you can do it by going to Ken Otto's GoFundMe. I love your name, baby Satchmo. That was the name of the baby that Earl Douglas, Black Earl Douglas, had aborted uh, back in the day. And they named it Baby Satchmo. So that is a great name. Uh, let's take a call for a second. Someone just called in. I kind of like the fact that there's no noise or anything with the calls. This is great. Uh, caller, you're on the air. Yeah, I was just wondering, Stut Joe, uh, 
Did you guys have like favorite super chatters? Like, are there any names that stick out to you? Oh man. Um, you know, you, you, when you're, when you're doing a show like we were doing, you know, you're appreciative to everyone that donates in big or small. It, it, it's it, people are giving you their money, their hard earned money. It's, you gotta be appreciative of that. Can I, I mean, obviously there question? were some people that were giving a, a ton of money. So, you know, the, the, those names stick out in my mind, but yes, we all love, we were appreciative Chandler. every time money came in. Dave Daffler, yeah. Dave Daffler, David Chandler, Tiff, uh, you know, all the names. I'm sorry. Now that I listen to people, I feel bad for not naming certain people. Vaping Dago. Vaping Dago. We Mm -hmm. love you all. But yes, the people who give money are our favorite chatters. (laughs) The pay pigs. What was your other question, sir? Is Mike Morris actually that fat? (laughs) Is that Joe? Is he that fat? How fat? I don't know. How fat was he? If you're asking him if he's as fat as Carlos, no, but close. Yeah, you, think he, you think he's fatter than me or skinnier? I don't know. I don't remember. He was, I guess he was kind of a chunky guy, but. He was chunky. I I, I wasn't very surprised when I saw him. I didn't think no. he was a, he like, like a large man. He just looked like someone's dad. I don't know. Yeah. He just looks, he, there's nothing special. I didn't even realize he was yeah, there. He's until not that he big. On stage. Yeah. I don't know. He's just a, he's just a guy. Carlos is much he, much bigger. These I guys are lying. They fucking that guy's a he's a pig. <laughs> Morris is a fucking pig. All right, uh, <laughs> let's uh, catch up on uh, anything. Doctor Steve, thank you for the five dollars. Stud Joe Depot, we will always speak your name for the YouTube videos. Hope to see a return to regular posting. Yes, that is a fantastic question. Are you going to kind of go away from the dabble verse and all this, or do you intend to keep doing it? Are you going to try and? Do your own thing on your channel, maybe some live shows. What is the future hold for Stut Joe Depot? You know, I'm not really sure. Uh, focus for me right now is providing for my family, and then you know, we'll see what comes down the road. I'd like to get back into creating content. It's you know, it's what I love to do. It's fun. Hundred percent. We'll see. Thanks, Doctor Steve. I appreciate that, man. Yes, thank you, Doctor Steve Blinky Jedi. Thank you for the 199. Is the Shuli Network drug testing run by? USAF. <laughs> is there a drug testing? Were you drug tested as part of uh, of your hiring? I was never drug tested. No. No medical packages. No 401k. Nothing like that. I assume. No. Okay. Hey, if, uh, can, can I just? Hey, this son of a bitch. This guy. I'll read that if you don't mind it. <laughs> of course, please. <laughs> Rels, five dollars. Carlos clogged the toilet again. Eat more roughage. He's right. First, my obesity is brought on by my out of control alcoholism. By the way, just for the record, so it's not that easy. Me and Ski Mask are, are doing Irish, together. right? Yeah, Irish. Speaking of Irish, Stutcho Depot, would you go on Misery Loves Company if Brennan paid you whatever Shuli owes you? Uh, probably not because I just don't. You know, I, I, I don't know. I don't know. I'd have to. I, I, I Maybe. I don't know. I'd have to think about it. Were you ever contacted by John, Stuttering John? Did he ever threaten you or anything like that? No. I just got a notification that Jake Hudson is live. So if anyone wants to go over there and watch Jake, Jake Hudson is live. Toucan Sam, thank you for the 199. Who do you hate more now, Shuli or John? Oh, John. It's always John. He's the worst. So, oh, that was kind of interesting, though. You could go in different direction and start making Shuli videos now and be the hero of Shuli's Anonymous. You could take it. Oh, over. there is a there is a little package I dropped in the uh, Discord for you guys to play at the end here. Okay. Yes, I do have that video, and we will uh, play that. Uh, and, and I'll jump off, uh, guys. I, thank you for letting me uh, impose. Uh, oh no, I'm glad God, that you are here. God bless uh, you all. I figured you'd have. You don't have any more questions. I mean, I guess the only question to this is a blowjob question, but Stacho Depot and <laughs> what's your what was the highlight of working at that? Because you are like an OG uh, dabbler. You're like a guy that uh, you know. I never would call myself a dabbler because people like you were actually creating content when I was just like you know mooching off uh, Kevin Dumbfuck. So what was the <laughs> highlight? What was the, the what was the what are you most proud of? of your time at the Shuli Network as I drop shit? Probably DabbleCon. 
I mean, it was just, it was the first event. I mean, it was just on such a scale that, you know, we weren't, we, we didn't know what to expect. And then, you know, we were just overwhelmed by, by the love that everyone had for us. You know, the event went great. It was, uh, I don't know, it was a blast. Got to getting to meet everybody in person. That was Dabble probably the really, for me. Re- DabbleCon really, really was a fun time. Like, yeah. it's hard to explain uh, how much fun it was because I know everyone always gripes on, oh, it was snowing. and it, But that's what added to the fun. I don't know. It just the whole experience was really great. It was great to meet everyone, everyone from the Shuli Network, Carlos, um, you know, everyone. Uh, what was that? Uh, Dang Peace Lizard. out. Thank you, Carlos. Thank you, Stevie Lou, whoever the hell you are. Dang Lizard, thank you for the two euros. Stucho Depot, have you contacted Shuli after leaving? I've talked to Shuli a couple times since I've left. Yeah. Was that always kind of pleasant? Was Yeah, they were yeah, it was pleasant. Caller, you're on the air. Hey, how's it going? Good, how are you? Well, best I can be. Uh this is painkiller. Hey, uh, I just don't understand the fascination with Shuli's pocket. And uh, I just tuned in. Has he had a chance to speak or defend himself at all? Or... Shuli? Uh, no, Shuli. Yeah. <clears throat> Shuli has not come on. Uh, okay, I just tuned in. But... Yeah, no, no. The, we have not heard from Shuli. Um, but uh, right. yeah, I have sent the link. So come on here, you coward. He will not show his face. Oh, I didn't know. Oh, I figured... I figured he jumped right on. Wow, that's crazy. It is crazy. Um, I, I'm a huge fan of yours. I'm a huge fan of all you guys. Every, I don't care for Kevin, and obviously John's a pariah of the internet. Sure. But uh, I just I just think it's kind of gross that everybody is so fascinated with what Shuli has. And like 1099s, that's nobody's fucking business, man. That's lame. It's super lame. Like, well, how would you feel if somebody pried into your life and said, hey, what's – What's be dabbler filing for fucking taxes? You know what yeah. I mean? I just think it's kind of gross. You're right. No, I agree. I agree. I agree. Well, you know, and I thought Stutcho was pretty classy about that. He didn't mention any money. You know, he, he didn't go into detail about any of that. So I thought, yeah, like I said, I thought that was really classy. Yeah, it should be it should be limited to whatever whatever experiences he had as an employee or whatever a subcontractor, whatever the fuck you call it. But I just think it's kind of the fascination of I, I just look objective point of view like what would what how would i feel if this was happening to me right now like it would be i'd be pretty i'd be like what the fuck man this is this is weird it's kind of weird <laughs> no i agree but anyway i don't, like that other fat guy that called in that's counting cheeseburgers i mean that's fucking weird that dude is weird and he's like oh kevin brennan is right <laughs> I, I it's like you gotta take all this. Listen, you gotta take all this with a great. Oh, assault. I do, I do. Everyone, I do. It's straight up entertainment. Yes, <laughs> everyone's everyone's looking for an angle. <laughs> everyone's looking for an angle. Everyone's looking to be funny. So that's all. That's all that kind of stuff yeah, is. No yeah. one. Well, that dude, that dude wasn't funny. He sucked. No. He's like, yeah. See, Kevin Brennan was right. right. No, Kevin Brennan's fucking crazy. That part's crazy. No, I agree, and I think it's. Really? I think it's really. Uh, gross of kevin to make threats to like get the irs on bob yeah. like that's yeah. yeah all that shit like where do we yeah, all get... that shit's lame it's super childish yeah. right like how did we get here that grown men are threatening to call <laughs> the irs on each other it's like literally like being yeah. on the playground and being like well i can't call my mom so i'm gonna call the irs on you like it's so stupid <laughs> exactly my point and if you look at this this current situation from that perspective it's kind of the same thing as like what surely how does he do this how does he take it's fucking weird man and it's i guess his success his success fucking really rubs people the wrong way i don't know why i've been subscribed to surely since way before dabble fucking anything was invented you know years ago and i just I know comedy subjective and you, you like who you like, you hate who you hate, but I just don't understand why people hate Shuli to the degree that they do. You know, it's, we, it's wild. Shuli you know, card he seems like a nice guy. One. No, Shuli is a very, Shuli's been well, a very nice guy to me. I have no problems with Shuli. I'm just conducting this interview. Such I wanted to talk and I would give the listeners and anyone who wants to ask a question. Okay. Uh, no, that for him. but I you're will do an awesome job, dude. Uh, I appreciate it, but I, I agree. I have nothing against Shuli. And uh, as far as all the money talk, like I said, people are just looking for an angle, no one really cares. 
how people are paid. I know. I just don't understand what, I don't understand what propels people to fucking dig so deep into his shit. I don't get it, but I guess it's the nature of the internet nowadays. I won't, yes. I won't keep you a thank you for your time. I'm a fan of all you birds. You all do awesome work. You, you know, I spend 70 hours a week working, digging dirt. And I listen to you guys all fucking day, every day. I appreciate, and, uh, I appreciate it, man. everything you guys do. Thank you. And yeah, thank, thank you. you. Thank you for supporting yeah. and uh, all your hard work and everything you do, sir. Uh, yeah, no, again, no one is looking to ruin anyone's life here. I don't want anyone to ruin anyone's life. Don't go digging into shit. This is all just comedy and stupid stuff. But again, it's not comedy to stud Joe Depot who feels that he's owed money and that he was kind of wronged. And, and you know, that's why we just kind of wanted to get his side and kind of see, I, we all had questions. Like, I, I'm just curious how they can afford to employ so many people like you have five producers and then three on air talent and everyone has like some sort of family and that was my biggest like how are they doing this kind of thing uh toucan sam thank you for the 199 stut joe depot got used and abused how much are you owed i don't think he's gonna say that yeah i've already addressed that yeah, he's already addressed that. Baby Satchmo, Earl Douglas's aborted baby. Uh, Two dollars. You're the first one to know what my name meant. Of course, I know what your name means. I am the Ron and Fez in Encyclopedia. Remember the Beavis and Butthead Encyclopedia? Uh, but yes, I I am very well uh, versed in Ron and Fez uh, lore. So when I saw your name, I was very excited. Did, was this the one? You read? I don't remember. Yeah, yeah. Who do you hate more now, Shuli or John? He okay. said John. Of course, John. Uh, Hot Body, thirteen thirty five dollars Has anyone seen Carlos Danger and Chris Abels in the same room at the same time? Weird. I have not. I will say that. I definitely have not seen I that never have either. In the room at the same time. All right. Well, I guess that's about it. Um, I don't really have... Any more questions? Tiff, got more super chats. Tiff, thank you for the twenty dollars. I am happy to support you, my friend. No strings attached. Thank you very much, Tiff. Um, yeah, I don't. I can't think of uh, anything else. Uh, you really. Uh, I think you've addressed everything. OJ, do you have anything else? I don't think so. You know. Um... Yeah, I think he pretty much covered everything he wanted to cover. Unless, again, like unless there's anything else you want to get off your chest before you go, Stutcho. Um, yeah, I don't think I have anything else. Um, I think I touched on just about everything I wanted to touch on today. So, friend of the show, Brian Mills, one ninety nine. Wait, what is it like to work with Bob Levy? Oh, Bob is great, man. Bob's the best. He seems like a nice guy, but he, I mean, I don't think it would be hard to work with Bob because I mean, Bob is just there as another worker and Bob doesn't give a shit what's going on. He's just told when to go on and be funny. Uh, nasty Al, thank you for the four 99 such a depot. I'm a big fan, but why didn't you simply pick up the phone and call Shuli before complaining in the chat and making this public, not picking sides. Keep hitting. Well, I, I was just sitting there listening to, uh, Shuli bashed Kevin for not paying Bob and, I thought it was funny, so I put something in the chat that I thought was funny, and this is all kind of blown up from there. Uh, may, in, hindsight, in hindsight, maybe you know I went about this the wrong way. It, 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 you know, I'll say that I definitely did, but you know, is it the right way? No, is it the entertaining way for you guys? Probably. Sure, and it'll all blow over. In a few days, yeah, two, two weeks from now, we'll all be talking about something else. They'll play clips of this on BS in the morning, and then. Yeah. Something else will happen. Ray will fall Shit into his pants. A toilet or something. Yeah. Uh, were there ever any talks about Ray DeVito uh, behind the scenes of the Shuli Network? Were there big plans for Ray that fell through? Or do you think Shuli just looks at Ray as like a sideshow attraction? <laughs> um, <laughs> I don't. I don't know. Uh, Ray Ray's a character, I and mean, we we all know that. So. Yeah. Exactly. You know. That's why I think even once this whole dabble verse thing, I think I'm stuck with Ray, like listening to Ray for the rest of my life <laughs> or the rest of his life. At least I feel like that's, that'll be much shorter <laughs> painkiller. I love you, Ray. I'm sorry. I'm making jokes. 
Painkiller, uh, thank you for the $10. Thanks for listening. Sorry about the breathing and carrying on. No, Painkiller, you were great. I just don't know why you text me and said, hey, I'm going to call as Painkiller, but don't say my name. And then you said your name. So <laughs> I appreciate it, bud. Uh, Dang Lizard, thank you for the two euros. Have you contacted Shuli directly about money? I haven't contacted Shuli directly about money, no. The last talk we had about money was on the 22nd of May. When Shuli called me, told me, hey, I know it wasn't the full amount, but I'm going to get you the rest on the first. That was the last time we talked about money. And there was no money that was ever transacted between us. So, well, like I said, you'll, he'll definitely... I'm just sure. asking for what was promised to me. That's all. That's it. That's all he wants. He said that, you know, Shuli promised him a certain amount and he has not gotten that amount. And that's all this really is. Uh, John's ear mites, two dollars. Thank you. Uh, great show, El Harible. Keep dabbling, Stut Joe. Yes, I think Stut Joe will keep dabbling, but uh, he might take some time off, it sounds like. But thank you, John's ear mites. Uh, and thank you, Stut Joe Debo, for uh, spending your time with us today. Hey, no problem, guys. Appreciate hey. y'all giving me uh, giving an avenue to get my side of the story out. After yeah, I got absolutely. bashed for 30 minutes on Julie's net worth the other day. Yes, and so did we. I feel like Shuli was actually putting us in the same boat as the yeah. faceless cowards who will not show, show your face. Show your faces, you cowards. Uh, okay. Uh, again, Studjo, thank you so much. Thank you for coming on for this exclusive on the Shuli Network uh, and everything that happens behind the scenes there. Really appreciate it. And we will see you. Oh, wait. Real quick. Yes. The posters. Were there, oh. po were there posters made? Did you see the posters if they were made? Uh, I don't believe that there were any posters physically made before Pottstown. I can't speak to anything that's happened no. afterwards. Couldn't tell you, but no. Because why wouldn't they, they have been we didn't have them. out by now? It fell through the cracks. Like, but yeah, there's no way posters. Are oh, made. 105 days later. I mean, I can't, I can't tell you why 105 days later there's no posters. Poster Gate, day 105. Yeah, I know. I can't imagine posters. No, there's no way posters were ever made. Uh, because, yeah, they would have at least been sent out by now. Uh, can you uh, address the rumors that Shuli used the extra poster money to put an in-ground heated pool with two waterfalls in? Mm, I can't <laughs> confirm or deny that. Okay, I didn't think so, but I figured I would ask. Uh, again, Stutcho, thank you so much. Thank you for having fun with us, and we'll definitely have you on again. And everyone, be on the lookout. Go uh, subscribe to uh, Stutjo Depot's YouTube channel. And uh, what else? What else you want to plug? Oh, that's all. This goes up. And he's also on uh, on Twitter, Stutjo Depot, and uh, he puts out a lot of great stuff. And uh, thank you again, Bud. And uh, speaking of which, we're gonna play a video right now. Okay, yeah, appreciate it, guys. Thanks, man. We'll talk to you soon. Peace. Thanks. I love this stuff. This is like a TV show for me. I and for the record, our all revenue week. doesn't fluctuate, Kevin. It only goes in one direction. Well, mm -hmm. and, and people people have made consistently uh, uh, what they've made and better. Uh, everything's, mm -hmm. everything's going up over here. Uh, Bob, I know how it feels to not get paid on the way out. Uh, so, uh, uh Darren Bag Dave. Well, the chat's a little vague. Whose dick do I suck? Unlike Stud Joe Depot, I don't know that uh, he wants his business out there. But if we mm -hmm. want to get into uh, what he was paid, uh, go ahead. Speaking of not being paid, you have a former producer saying that he was not paid before he left the network via muttering Jay. Well. Again, I will say if if we want to address this, I'm more than happy to get into it tomorrow on BS. Uh, I, I know if it's if it's Stutjo, I know Stutjo values his privacy very much, and I find it uh, interesting that you know I guess he values the Dabbleverse uh, getting behind him a little more than his privacy. But it's all good. Why would this guy who wants to be so private in a in a community that he's racing to get praise from, a community that, that he respects so much, he won't even use his name or show his face. That's how that's how much faith he has in the 
dabble verse. And he ain't the only one. You got Coward. an army of people hiding. <laughs> Such great people in the dabble verse. That's why everybody's got a fucking mask and a, and a filter. Coward. And, and nobody's sharing any info. You're a coward, OJ. And, and, and he goes out and puts business. Out. Now, do I sit there and let him paint this picture that I'm some piece of shit? Or now I got to put your shit out there. It's really dumb. <laughs> it, it didn't have to go this way. You can't have it both ways. You can't sit there and shit on me when you know the shit I've done for you and helped you out with and been there for you for. You know that. I'm not lying. Be down. So for you to go and, and do listener, this, like, time caller. that's just fucking lame, dude. It's unnecessary. And two days later, a six-hour loop of uh, the Army Major on Lo-Fi comes out on, on his YouTube channel. It was about why wouldn't you bring this here and we can promote it on, on the channel and drive people to your channel and ten times more people will see it. But what what is he going to regret? Uh, a guy that he's giving his time and, and effort and energy to that just decides one day he doesn't want to pay him and that's that? Yeah. Well, why would you give anything to that guy? Oh. fantastic fantastic work as always by stut joe depot and obviously we will get uh shuli's rebuttal to all of this i guess on uh bs show whoever called in i i picked up your call and i was gonna just tell you hey hold on until after this clip but uh you started talking so i i hung up on you but call back you said uh long time listener second time caller i believe but uh yeah call back uh, Dave Daffler, thank you for the five dollars. Tuki asked me to remind everyone about the danger of filthy wops. Thank you, thank you, Dave Daffler, for reminding us. Um, uh, yeah, thank you very much for uh, that. <laughs> Use the entertainment. Thank you for the two pounds, Kevin Brennan. Kevin Brennan isn't funny anymore at the minute. Yeah, I don't know. I kind of like uh, Kevin Brennan on his show, solo shows. I'm enjoying that. I think his uh, his MLC shows now are weird. Uh, and not to you know take anything away from Stevie Lou. I mean, Stevie Lou is a great guest. We have Stevie Lou on here. Um, I love Stevie Lou. And Stevie Lou and Ski Mask have always been a part of the show anyway. But, I mean, now it's like he's literally trying to find people to goof on which i know was always kind of the purpose anyway i guess uh dave daffler thank you for gifting five memberships yes and also tiff thank you for gifting five memberships thank both of you thank you for gifting memberships that is much appreciated uh but yeah uh, oh david chandler with 20 gifted memberships thank you Thank you, David Chandler, for the 20 gifted memberships. That is insane. I still can't believe that this is like a real thing we do every week. I know. Weird. It's, it's crazy. And we almost hit 500 today. We're at 10. If we were at 490 something for the longest time. And I was like, come on, hit. I want to screen capture it because I'm a geek. Another beloved chatter, Skeddy Tooth. John just gifted 10 memberships. Oh, you guys are nuts. Thank you, Skeddy Tooth. We are definitely above 400 members now with all those gifted memberships. And again, I know it's because of gifted memberships. I'm not delusional. They go away. You know, it goes away because people, they don't re-up. But uh, take a look at our members-only stuff. We do members-only shows. We do members-only uh, members only stream once a month. Uh, the last members only stream I made free for everyone because everyone wanted to see it. It was where we did our uh, traditional Haitian uh, T-shirt voodoo burning ceremony to try and rid uh, Ray of his gout. But I think we accidentally tore his ACL instead. So I'm sorry about that, Ray. We didn't mean to do that. We definitely had good intentions when we were doing our voodoo ceremony. But Ray like literally tore his ACL like a few days later. So oops, I guess we did it wrong. But that was not our intention, so I apologize. Ray, I think we that. did cure his gout. His gout seems to be gone. That's true. He's not yeah. talking about He's not bitching about his gout anymore. So, yeah, yeah. maybe we did. Yeah. I and guess you got to give and take and, you know. Yep. Dave Daffala with another 20 gifted memberships. You guys are crazy. Thank you so, so very much. Like, you have no idea. Like, honestly, like, 
OJ and I talk about this all the time. Like we are two just retarded guys. Um, there's nothing special, but you guys seem to really enjoy our stuff. And I really, I really, really, really do appreciate that. Thank you, everybody. It's amazing. I don't even know what to say, honestly, uh, sometimes. All right. But I do want to go over. Uh, should we give uh, the Mega G a link? Would you like to talk sure. to the Mega G? Yeah, sure. Can you send him a link? I don't know. If uh, I think I, I have him on Twitter because oh, he messaged me the other day. So I think I can actually send him a link. But I want to find the Joey C clip first. Because okay. uh, Joey C's stream was up last night. Uh, but Joey C was not on. It was his wife, Mrs. C. And she was going on about the whole Melton thing and about how Melton is a scumbag for putting the picture of her daughter up there. Yeah. And all that stuff. And listen, I get it. I get it. But again, what world are we in? Like, you, you came into this world voluntarily. And now, like... People like Joey C and DG, I feel like they have good intentions, but ulterior motives as well. Like DG is not even, he doesn't even shy away. He's like, I'm trying to hawk my brother's book. No one. And I mean, no one cares about your brother's book. We care less about your brother's book than we care about KC's book. And we're all fans of KC. So think about that. No one cares. And then Joey C, apparently Cardiff found uh a show from the past that joey c used to do and cardiff has like a bunch of episodes of it of joey c pretty much saying like i want to be the next howard stern or whatever so i get that but at the same time we know you're here for the super chats we get that and there's nothing wrong with that we get it just in, but just admit it and you also have to offer something for these super chats like everyone goes on about how oh tukey soup is now just a super chat show I'm sorry. I didn't mean to make it that way. I spaced the show and I timed it so it's exactly an hour. It just so happens that people enjoy it and they want to pay to view it. I don't know. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to do it. All right. But it also like people look at that like Elise. I know Elise has seen these shows and she goes, oh, I just have to go on and do a live show and people will super chat me like Dave Daffler and Tiff and David Chandler and all this stuff. And maybe they will eventually, but it's not going to be there immediately. It's just, it's just crazy how this world is just, it's growing, but it's growing because of the super chats. Like people see the super chats and they, they go, man, I can do that. I can go on the internet with some people and just bullshit and talk and read people's chats that they pay for. Uh, but okay. So last night, well, but real quick, before we get back into it, uh, yes. Dr. Steve gifted 10 memberships, Dr. Steve, thank you for the 10 memberships. You're crazy. Oh, wait. This and uh, becoming a, this is becoming a competition now. Kenneth Pogue with five gifted memberships. Kenneth Pogue. Thank you for the five gifted memberships. I appreciate it tremendously. You guys are awesome. Uh, I can't even explain how awesome you guys are. Uh, it, it just, it's, it's cool. It's like surreal. Like, and again, we are nothing. We are such a small fraction fraction of nothing on the internet. Like we go crazy because we almost broke 500 listeners in the grand scheme of that things. That's nothing. I get it. But a year ago, I wasn't doing any of this shit. And, uh, and now I'm having literally the time of my life. Uh, so if there's any inspiration to take here, it's just try. And I know that kind of, I sound like a huge hypocrite now because I keep telling other people, stop trying, but at least try. And then after you try, you got to realize, okay, I stink at this and I shouldn't do it anymore. Or and figure out figure out what you're good at. And right. my, I've been using this saying for a long time, do this with everything in life, accentuate your positives and hide your weaknesses figure out what those are and do your best listen to the orange the orange is all knowing we should have some kind of zen buddha type thing for you oj you should do a, a daily like oj's uh oh, no. zen moment kind of deal <laughs> like let two minutes or less and we'll make that a members only feature uh because yes you're very wise uh, yeah i mean everyone should at least try but then there's a point where you got to go, okay, I stink at this. 
and uh, and stop. And that's why Tukey is here. Tukey is here to encourage those shows to kind of think about what they're doing and maybe stop. Dave Daffler, uh, thank you for the five dollars. As Tukey says, never trust a guinea. Yes, never trust a guinea. Do guinea pigs smell? I assume they smell, right? Um, I, I, yeah, I mean, I, I remember having one when I, when I was a child and I, I feel like oh, there did? was a, a, like an odor from their cage or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Like there's gotta be only, I, I mean, I know real Guinea smell. Of course they smell like garlic and basil and tomatoes right. and all that kind of crap, yeah. but I'm talking about real. Cause my four year old, um, sister wants a guinea pig and i am so like i don't need that because i had a i had a friend who had ferrets and my god their house stunk and i just I, assume it's the same i'm not really a big fan of anything any kind of pet that you keep in a cage yeah i'm i'm with that too but at the same time uh they'll also uh shit everywhere if you just let them roam all the time right I, that's why you just don't get a guinea pig yeah i know i can't do a guinea pig even a hamster i feel a hamster is like a small guinea pig right like but yeah, it's but... basically a mouse like you're just yeah. keeping a mouse right. max brangle thank you uh for becoming a youtube member <clears throat> don't do it get a puppy says tiger lily i already have two dogs we're waiting for one of them to die and then we'll get another dog. But no, she's just like, they have a guinea pig at her school. And then our neighbors have guinea pigs. So now she's all like, I need a guinea pig. And I'm like, no, you don't. I was one of those kids that wanted one. And I lost interest really quick after I had it. Aren't there countries where they eat guinea pigs? Probably. Disgusting. Uh, hot body, uh, 1330. Thank you for the $5. All these memberships. Like, looks like you'll have to do more shows. Yay. People will stick around. Yes. Yes, yes, we will be uh, doing more shows. That's why I'm trying to think of like a quick, like daily thing. I was going to do maybe Tukey, but now I'm thinking maybe OJ. Maybe we'll do both. Maybe, I don't know. We'll figure something out, but we'll definitely start putting out some more stuff. Um, I'm a little worried about the uh, Yo Remember the 90s only because of all the work that has to go oh, into that show. Yeah, well, that whole like post production, like we're going to do pop up video thing. Yeah. That's not going to really. Yeah, I don't happen. think we can. Yeah, <laughs> there might be some episodes, or uh, the thing that I can see happening is like a month later, maybe it'll show up or something. Like it's definitely not gonna. Yeah, it's gonna be impossible. Yeah, I don't I, even know how we're gonna do that show weekly. I know. Uh, American cupcake, five dollars. Thank you, dude. I've been trying to tell them that his current business model is for shit. That's why I tried to tell him to have goofy fun on his show. Who are you talking about, American Cupcake? Yeah, I'm not sure. Dude, I've been trying to tell him that his current business model is for shite. That's why I tried to tell him to have a goofy to have goofy fun on his show. Uh, just type in in regular chat, and we'll look out for it, American Cupcake. I'm curious who you're talking about. Uh, Shaka Khan, thank you for the four ninety nine. El Harible, Tuki, and Bedorable are the only characters in this dabble mess that truly make me laugh and not at them. You are very talented. Thank you, Shaka Khan. I appreciate that very much. So, so he must laugh at me. Yes, they laugh at you. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Uh, I, I do. I really, I'm, I don't know how to take praise because I never really felt like I've been that good at things before. But this stuff, I'm starting to feel like I'm okay at American Cupcake was talking about Joey C. Oh, Joey C. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, he's got to have fun. Like, his whole... Um, I mean, it's fucking interesting. I, I, I really... I would guy. I would love to get him on. I, I told him this yesterday, that I would love to get him on and do, like, how they have the uh, the sign language person, like, when the president or someone's talking. and Right. Got the, I would love to have him on a whole one of our shows... Just doing that, sign languaging sure. the whole show. I think that would be fun. A hundred percent. I love Joyce. I think he's. I think he's a. Uh, he's a character, you know. And yeah. That's what some... we love. That's what we like. We like personalities. He's definitely got one. Yeah, he's a he's a nutball. But uh, I mean, it's just one of those things where it's like, where they go? How long okay. can you stay with? Uh... All right, I just sent Dr. Chow the link. Uh, how long can you stay around with these shows, though, that are just kind of like hanging out? And I don't know. And 
is this little Filipino kid, is that the real Beetlejuice? <laughs> Yo, when he talks, I swear to God, I hear Beetlejuice. <laughs> what is his name? Oh, you're talking about Spider, Spider? Alamar. Yeah, Spider Alamar. Yes. I was going to say Spider Harrison. Isn't that a <laughs> serious guy? General uh, Ocean Wolf, the bad guy of the uh, Tukey World Order. Harible Heenan and OJ Monsoon, two best in the biz. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate that, General Ocean Wolf. But please, stand back and stand by. All right, so this was last night on Joey C's stream. Uh, that's Joey C's uh, mom up in the top left, right? I, I don't see anything. Oh, sorry, sorry. Yes, I'm not uh I'm not sharing yet. Sorry. I stink at this. I stink. All right, here we go. All right. So that's Dr. Chow in the uh left bottom left. I mean, if you were just looking at this for the first time, I would have thought Dr. Chow was the top right guy, but he's not. Dr. Chow is in fact not Asian at all. I don't even <laughs> think the other guy is Asian. I think he's like black. Uh, but he, I don't know. For some reason, I felt like he was I think like he's Filipino. Hispan yeah, I think he's Hispanic. Okay. And then that's Joey C's mom? His uh, wife. Oh, his wife. Okay. Excuse yes. me. And then the great OJ. All right. So we're going to pick it up here. And uh, things get interesting. The picture. But um, I don't know. For me, it's. it's would you, would of, you say right. the comment, fuck your dead daughter? Well, fuck record, you, fuck your so. dead daughter. And then, look I mean, who, if you're asking me record, what I yeah. would do, no. Like, I, I that's not my style. I don't but, think any human being the would. People, yes, there are. Yes, the, the people that were in the community record. that I was in would certainly do that and much, much worse. What? Yeah. I've never heard what? anybody ever. What the fuck being, are you talking about, bro? That's Dr. Chow. The community that I was in with the trolls that I was with would do things like that, yes, and worse. Oh, well, you man. were in, That's but demonic, you're out of that bro. now, Doctor. Yeah. I mean, Mr. Orange. I mean, Mr. Orange. OJ, no, I, you're I, out I, of that shit now, weird, right? That's yeah, I was the shit I was the nice guy into. in that. All right. So I know they're trying to uh, portray this, and I even see someone in the chat trying to portray this as we think it's okay. Uh, herbs two dollars it's okay to talk about dead kids says man with mask it's funny that you can't write dead kids um i don't think it's okay to talk i i don't like who gives a shit and why are they still going on to melton's show if they care so much about what he has on his screen yeah and by the way i was on the show for a while I was I was drinking, I was a little high, and this is all they were talking about over and over and over. So Call, yeah, okay. I don't yeah, all they were talking about was how Melton had her her uh dead daughter's uh mural behind him or whatever. Um caller, you're on the air. Yeah, just curious as to why Chow's going around telling everyone Patrick doxed him and his family. Also uh why was uh, Christina in prison while her daughter died? Right. Uh, I don't. I sent. I just sent Doctor Chow a link. Um, it's not that I'm saying it's okay to talk about dead kids. I just don't really fucking care. Like, listen, if my kid died and everyone wanted to make jokes about it, I just wouldn't listen to those shows. Like, I'm not gonna go on about this is horrible. Like, what do you think you're going to do? You're only going to enrage it more. It's like, you know, Rich, I was the trying to explain that to them and they just, I, I don't know if they weren't hearing me or just not right. getting it. Like if Jake Hudson starts putting pictures of my dead kid up right now, 14 people will know about it. And I won't because I'm not watching Jake Hudson. So I don't care. Oh, and then they'll say, well, people message us and all this. Stuff. That's the thing. You can call me right now, 973-440-9770. You can text me. It all goes to my personal phone. You know what I do when I don't want to pick it up? I just ignore it. I get text messages all day, every day. I yeah. try to answer as much as I can, but I don't have to answer any of them. I don't have to look at them. Like, I just delete them. Like, Melton is looking for comedy. He found it, obviously. He had 32 pictures up there and people paid to turn them. 
So there are people out there who wanted to pay for this morbid shit. Yes. Is it morbid? Sure. Was it fucking funny? Yes. Every time he got up to turn a thing, he plays that horrible recorder version of, uh, you know, like uh, my heart will go on or anything like that. Here is the mega G, uh, Dr. Chow. How are you, sir? What up guys? What's happening? G Good morning. No, I mean, uh, if you don't care about it, then why are you talking about it? Oh, no, I thought this was fascinating. This was great last night. I I was yeah. fascinated. But I don't necessarily, like, I, I'm not going to tell someone else not to do something on their show just because I don't agree with it. I just wouldn't watch I mean, it. She's a scorned mother. Like, uh, she doesn't like that uh, Melton put up, up, made one of his walls a photo of her dead daughter. No, I get it, but I mean, why? you can understand she, that as a parent. I, I no? do, I do get that. No, 100%. No one is denying that. But why is she still listening? Like, and also, if she just spent the three hundred bucks to turn the last three photos, this would all go away. The bit would be over. I guess. I mean, I just said no, it was but, tasteless. Oh, of course, it's absolutely tasteless. But it's kind of funny too, in a way. There are tasteless things that could be funny. Yeah, yeah. So I disagree, but that's about it. No, I mean, have you ever heard a 9-11 joke or a joke about a dead baby? I mean, dead baby jokes are like the funniest fucking jokes. I mean, I understand. Listen, I have little kids at my house, too. I would be crushed if someone did that. But at the same time, I wouldn't bring it up. I wouldn't watch it. The more you bring it up, the more people like me and OJ are going to talk about it. Because this was fascinating last night. Like the, the last 10 minutes of the show... I was I fell asleep in the middle of the show and then I all of a sudden woke up because I heard, you know, you and OJ kind of going back and forth and I was like this is fascinating. Yeah, I mean I guess yeah, it was fascinating but were you drunk last night or high or anything like that? I mean, you don't have to answer Always, that. Always, bro. Come on. Always. You're a mega G. Yeah, I know that. <laughs> all right. I'm going to keep playing this clip. Yes, there's a point. Uh, yeah. it's right. you're, it's you're, like, you're no, good, that's like, I'm good. Yeah. Dude, that's, OJ, you're, that's you're weird, great. bro. And I. It's called a troll. No with you Are you guys I'm like happy. old, that old? You don't know what. No, be it, dude. Do we. Jesus Christ. I've said it like 50 fucking Holy times. Shit, bro. You, you're that's, you're that's acting awful, like you're shocked bro. of what a troll is. I mean, on God, you just said that, bro. No, but I mean, it's a good point. I mean, we're all here because we're we're all kind of into this whole troll community, this troll sense of humor and all that kind of stuff. And I guess you're just saying there's a line for you, right, Dr. Chow? I mean, no, I mean, Christina asked me to come on a while earlier and I had talked to her. You can listen to the whole thing on her channel, but we mm -hmm. talked about it uh, a couple months ago. How is kind of tasteless and heartless yeah. was was the big thing that was reiterated many times by her and yeah. she asked me to come on to talk about it and i just gave my my two cents it's not a big deal call i'm not like taking it personal or anything caller you're on the air yeah hey el horrible oj chow what up hog? uh chow so last night we i tried to get a link from you but you're not cool with the troll anymore. You're, you're cool trolling people. But now I guess you're being this real woke guy. Um, what is your obsession with Patrick? Let's, let's just get that out of the way. You've been going on podcasts telling people he doxed you. And he never did. You're lying. Or, or are you trolling? Are you going around trolling, Patrick? I think you're a little emotional, dude. Like, uh, rent a no, life. No, no, no. I'm, I'm rent a honest. life. Uh, and move on. You, you, oh, so you you can DM me, and you can tell me to block people so that Patrick can lose his uh, server boosters. Remember when you told me to remove Skeddy? Yeah, 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 yeah. That would have that would have been a dude, okay. You want me yeah, to explain yeah, that? You're with a troll. You're a stupid little kid. You're a fucking kid. You're an emotional little kid. That's it. I think we all are, though. I mean, chow. You're sitting there bitching over a fucking uh, meth head kid. Yeah. So what? Okay. Well, I'm saying you, you're. I, I think you're, I, I thought you're, it was. You're uh, aligning yourself with meth heads and drug addicts. You're you're uh, dosing yourself and going on a little mirror podcast and having him trash you 
you're looking like a fucking pathetic bitch. You're no mega G. All right. And you're, and you're calling in crying about it. So I, I'm not crying. I'm telling you, you're a fucking loser. Okay. Hey, he's a mega G. You don't G. own bank. <laughs> no, no. He's in, he's in chat rooms going, Oh, I'm a super banker. I have debtors in my room. You, bro, you're a fucking loan officer. What are you officer. talking about? Don't, don't you're you're out of your mind. You're obsessed, bro. Rent a lie. No, no, no. no you're the one Go going to the library you're the and rent a lie. all your fucking lies around. You're not so cool. We all know this, bro. We all know this. The only thing cool about you is you have a hot mom and you paid for your wife. All right. Do you really have a hot mom? Pretty... Yeah, of course. What yeah, you... yeah, yeah. His mom, his mom is like DTS, too. I'm sure. Oh, stop it. Stop All right. it. Yeah. All right. What are you, you gonna do about are it? Are you good, Ian? No, he's he's, he's toying out so anything, hard. You have anything else, Ian? He's crying because his papa. No, I just uh, I, think, I think he's just ridiculous. He's going around uh just spreading all of this bullshit. He's oh, the he's the biggest loser around. Oh, he asked me for a hundred bucks so that he could book that black guy on Lil Mir's show, the Crip Daddy or Crip Mac or whatever. He asked me for a hundred bucks. Do you guys know that? Mega G, is this true? He he was no. going around in VCs and Discord asking people for money he said because he and Lil Mir couldn't get together enough money to book people. He said it's not true. I got to trust the Mega G if he says yeah, because it's not he's true. a fucking liar. He's he, 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 he's I mean, he knows. okay. So why can't he afford Streamyard? Why does he need Ari Jane Streamyard and then she kicked him off and then we haven't seen them together since? <gasps> Mega G. Why did, yeah. Why did you use Ari Jane's Streamyard? Why did you uh, ruin her trust in you? Why did I do that? Yeah. And I was, oh, and then you went on Twitter the next day when she was on Ray Show, and you insulted her look. So you, she's cool with you, and you're her friend. But then you'll dog on her whenever you feel like it. Mega G. I guess. Yeah. <clears throat> and you're a fucking bitch. All right. All right. And who are you? You're the one who is my uh, historian of me, so. Uh, yeah, because you're in my DMs all the fucking time. Uh, I will fucking, uh, hey, I've already given them to Soft Chow. Soft has already read them all, okay? I'll share it to everyone. I don't give a fuck. All yeah, your little, hey, why don't we do this so we can get over on this guy, man? You're a fucking pathetic idiot. And I've never gone with any of your bits. But you constantly keep messaging me trying to get more bits going. All right. All right, Ian. All right. See, he can't refute any of it. He's he's a fucking loser, guys. He's the mega G. Yeah. No. He's a mega G. He's going to hate. Watch the money pile up. Come on. Beat it, nerd. All right. Boy, uh, tears. Uh, all right. Here we go. You know that. I just said what? You said that That's wasn't true. bad. Christina asked That's not what I said. Also, are you, are you like fucked up or something? Who, me? No, Chow. I think he's like... I'm just trying to get to now where uh, Spider <laughs> talks. Because Spider, I swear <laughs> to God, close your eyes when Spider talks and it sounds like Beetlejuice. <laughs> Retarded. He's like, is he like on drugs or what is going on? He's like not understanding anything. Yeah, He's just no, going I mean, off like, and he keeps repeating I mean, about do the we, pictures do we on have the wall. To do it Tell the us about the pictures time. on the wall again, Chow. Do we have to do it for the fourth time about do how what? the dead daughter is on yes, the wall keep telling and you us. think it's cool? I know. Keep telling us because we haven't heard that 50 fucking times. I know, but <laughs> keep telling us how you think it's cool. Again, something I didn't say. Okay. Yes, we no, did it for no, the no. sixth time. Yeah. Weird, dude. Super All right, guys. Well, I'm going to let you guys plug your shows. So, because um, Joey. All right. Uh, caller, you're on the air. Hey, what's going on? I just wanted to make sure everybody knows what just happened here today. Dr. Chow just ate shit like the bitch he is. Uh, I'll, I'll continue up there. Thank you, guys. Dr. Chow, you're a little fucking faggot. Oh, stop it. Good one, Hawk. He's a mega G. Good one. Cry harder. All right. 
where are we? Uh, I'm really just trying to get the spider talking now. Ready for me to wrap it up. So, are you seriously on drugs right now, child? Because you're like, being... uh, what drugs were you on last night, Doctor Chow? He wasn't oh, understanding bro. anything I was saying. I was at that point. I was frustrated because he was he was putting words in my mouth, and I, I did get frustrated. What'd you say? All of them? Yeah. You, you know are, that, bro. You're a fucking mega G. <laughs> That's why I love you. Retarded. Of course, all the time, bro. It's all right, guys. All right, so. Are you on oranges? Dr. Chow, you want to plug your show first? No, I'm being serious. Like, dude, like, you're putting words in my mouth. You're saying things I, mean, I don't the say. And you're repeating shit I've yourself. ever heard in my life, bro. And you're telling, you're calling everybody pedophiles. I mean, that's all you we've are, heard for the but, last hour. Yeah. Yeah, well, what was the pedophile thing? I, I need some context. I don't remember. Uh, oh, it was because of the dead daughter's picture. I guess the picture was on. She was underage in that picture. I think you said. Was that? And anybody, any, anybody that was flipping the pictures was a pedophile. Well, I mean, I think. I don't know. I don't know about that, but uh, I think the one thing was about Brennan. Oh, the Brennan thing. Okay, yeah. caller, you're on the air. Well, I guess I guess I should come on since you guys got a lot of talk about me, right? Oh, who's this, Joey C? That's right. Oh no, we're not talking about Dang. you. We're talking about Doctor Chow. Well, you guys should leave Doctor Chow alone, man. That's the Mega G, dude. Doctor Chow is the Mega G. Ian Hawk is a punk, and Ian Hawk's a punk. He knows he's a punk. He's a bitch punk, and that's what he is. He runs his mouth to hide behind his microphone. That's all he does. Uh, why? So, why don't you like Ian? Ian's a piece of shit. All right, fair enough. Why don't I like him? Why don't I like him? Yeah. Well, because he thinks he thinks he, he thinks he pulled the wool over our eyes when we caught him halfway into his act when we were letting him moderate our chat room for a day that it lasted. But you know, you know, if he if he, if he wants to get away with a scam or whatever he was trying to pull, you got to string it along for weeks and weeks and weeks. And then he would have got me and made me look bad, but he. I caught his ass within about the first two hours of the show, so but we just let him play it out, and uh, you know he's just a little punk kid, so he doesn't like talking. Do you mean? And, uh, and I had to clear something up. Yes, I, I want to ask you something. Did, was someone just said that? Did Ian Hawk just say my daughter was a meth baby? Was she talking about my daughter? No, I think he said a meth head. Uh, so was a meth head. Uh, okay, okay. Because I, so I misunderstood what he said because I didn't hear anyone say meth baby. Yeah, I, I don't believe it. I, I dig you, man. I dig you a lot, man. I love your I love Pookie Man. I love your show. I dig I just you. became a member. I just like I get to the membership, I guess. Thank so you. So that's cool. But I will re up. I'll re up it when it's uh, when it's ready to be started because I like your show, man. Oh, thanks, um, dude. I like your show. <laughs> obviously. Thank you, brother. Thank you. OJ, what's up, buddy? Hey, Joey. Your, oh, I got your back, brother. You know that. Yeah, of course. You're a mega G, All right, guys. All right. Thank you for calling in, Joey. Thank you, brother. All right. Uh, all right. I just Again, I'm just trying to get to where Spider talks. <laughs> Before we do that, let's get to the Super Chats. All right. Let's get to some Super Chats. Yes. Everything is uh, a mess here. Uh, I didn't know um, we were going to go this long into it. But uh, Shagus Monkey, thank you for becoming a YouTube member. David Chandler, thank you for the four ninety nine title. OJ's fresh squeeze. Yes, that uh, could be the title of your daily or semi daily uh, inspirational show. I just want to do like an inspirational, like almost like a fortune cookie, like a daily <laughs> OJ fortune cookie. And uh, maybe on the days you don't, we'll have Tuki do it. But yes, uh, thank you, David Chandler, for that. Uh, Tiff, five dollars. Can we talk about the orange? Maybe try a new look. Just one lady's opinion, of course. You're creepy. Tiff, it's funny you say that because my mom said the same thing. She said, uh, I think OJ has to change the filter. I was like, I fucking love it. And I'm going to leave all of you to be with OJ because I love it so much. So I will abandon my family to be with OJ because I love the way he looks now. Uh, David Daffler, thank you for the $5. When a WAP throws a hand oh. grenade at you, pull oh. the pin and throw it back. He does. Yes, because they're very it's stupid. Not David. That's Dave Daffler. Oh, did I say David? You did. Oh, sorry. Dave Daffler. Thank you. <laughs> and I love that you now have a toucan. Did I see that right? 
I talked to Dave about it. He said that it's like a, a, a real life cartoon, a come to life cartoon. He's like, that, it's just so cool. That bird looks so fucking cool. Yeah. Do you have any birds, Mega G? You feel I feel like you nah. a guy. No, I don't mess with that. Yeah, don't they shit everywhere? Aren't they like dirty? They're super loud? Yeah, that, heard. that too. But yes, uh Italians are very stupid that they will throw a grenade at you with out pulling the pin I birds agree. are very intelligent and i believe you could train them like where to shit and all that oh i know they're intelligent i just always i always uh because my cousin had a bird and maybe it's just because my cousin was lazy but their house always smelled not as bad as the ferret house though holy shit american cupcake thank you for the five dollars how dumb am i when you said guinea pig yeah you know what i was thinking i wasn't even thinking about the little furry cute animal no, I, mean, I, I, I threw a comment out in the chat. I th I thought that's why you wanted to have me on because uh, I actually I've eaten a guinea pig before, bro. Oh, have you really? Yeah. Ew. What did that yeah, taste was, like? Uh, actually, it tasted pretty good, but uh, I got like really sick afterwards. It was down in uh, Peru. Wow. Oh, this chick I, I was with, like, uh, I was hooking up with down in Cusco, like up in the mountains. Right. It was like, oh yeah, let's go to this uh, street festival thing and. She was she was Peruvian. She was from there, and right, yeah, she uh found this thing, and I I tried it, and I was like, okay, whatever, but yeah. What kind I of meat was it like? Like pork or chicken? chicken? Yeah. Uh, I mean, I guess yeah, a little bit in between both, maybe like a. I don't know if you've ever had squirrel. No. But, wow. Yeah. Yeah. You are a mega G. Yeah. Kinky loco. Guinea pigs are a delicacy <laughs> in Peru. There you uh. go. Did you get food poisoning or you just got sick from it? I don't know. I honestly it could have been from one of like several dozen things while I got sick, but it was after it happened. So I kind of blame that. Yeah. Joey B. Thank you for the $2 chat. Who smells worse? One Joey C or two Ray. <laughs> so Joey B wants everyone to put a one or a two. Who smells worse? If you think it's Joey C, put a one. If you think it's Ray, put a two. And we'll try and uh, keep a tally. Uh, Skinny Tooth, thank you for the $10. Guinea pigs smell, and they will literally die from fright. So, Tukey, Tukey, isn't rosy enough? <laughs> Dude, yes. there is there's so many people voting on this, and literally all of them are the number one. Oh, Congratulations, Joey C. Kegel Jeff just gave the first number two. Oh, there you go. Congratulations, Joey C. You have won the uh, patented uh, Who Smells Worse award here on Bedabbling Live with El Harible, OJ, and Dr. Chow. That's fantastic. Uh, Dave Daffler, thank you for the $2. Joey C doesn't wipe. Ew. Allegedly. Is that true, Joey C? I don't believe that. I'm not paying attention to my phone. Oh, I've been missing calls. I'm sorry, guys. I haven't been paying attention to my phone. It's probably e, uh, Ian Hawk calling in Spurging again. Uh, <clears throat> no, it's not. But it is. Uh, it is one person. It seems so they do want to get on. Um, no, I just wanted to have you on because I wanted to talk to you and OJ and uh, just you know, because I, again, I didn't listen to this whole show. Let's try I to heard get parts of it through these super chats, and then I really want you to play that Spider Alamar clip because if if it's the clip I'm thinking of, it's it's great. What at the end? I don't know if it's at the end or not. Okay, uh, Robert Span, uh, thank you for the two dollars. I'm 100 percent your sign language person. Oh, oh that's okay. fantastic. Cool. That's good to know. Doctor Steve, thank you for the five dollars. Tuki and Myrtle might be fun for like three minutes. She says. Some corn squeezins, good vitals, and some sangin vittles. It'll it'll be a hoot nanny. <laughs> oh, good vittles, good vitals, good vittles, and some sangin. It'll be a hoot nanny. <laughs> Doctor Steve's a weirdo. I love him. Herbs, thank you for the two dollars. It's okay to talk about dead kids, says the man with the mask. Yeah, we did that one. Yes, it's okay to talk about anything. Why are we trying to restrict? anyone from doing anything no, again, no one's saying no one's saying that you can't talk about it i just of course that it was uh distasteful and creepy yes i will agree i will agree that it's distasteful but i will also agree that there's a part of me that finds hey. it hilarious that he went to a kinko's or at even funnier is that he did it in his own house to print out separate pit 
pages of a giant picture of someone's dead super creepy like, but yeah i mean fucking, yeah it's, I mean, it's also insane that it's someone insane, would go yes. to that length to do it all of that i agree 100 percent. i agree with Agreed. what you're saying and i just but i also find it in a way hilarious but i'm also sick as everyone dave. can tell uh dave daffler thank you for the five dollars why do italians have screen doors in submarines oh is that why <laughs> the italian navy is shit that yeah. wouldn't make sense Mason in Portland, thank you for the $2. New fan, really enjoying you guys. FKB. Bye, Brennan. Thank you. <laughs> Flimsy Greenberg, friend of Melton. I believe they were playing poker together. I was very jealous. I wish I could have met you, Flimsy. Uh, Flimsy Greenberg has become a member. Thank you so much. Uh, Danglebert, Uber Dangle, thank you for the $5. Confucius say Italians come with manic hand and grody rectum. <laughs> disgusting disgusting <laughs> disgraciad what not chaser thank you for the 199 poor joey c and his methed out criminal family that is horrible and alleged i don't like that get that off the screen friend of the show brian mills thank you for being a friend 499 for the record burning human bones for ball and mullock is bad also this guy knows a little too much what does that mean for the record burning human bones for bale and bale Moloch? and Moloch. yeah it's what uh, is that uh ritualistic uh stuff i don't oh, know fabulous we need into it we need that for the next uh t-shirt burning yes yeah. to try and uh cure ray's now torn acl or whatever herbs two dollars his discord totally doxed chow oh you're talking about melton I don't know. I mean, that's probably, yeah, I guess I mean, that's probably back from when uh, Ian a bunch was... of a bunch of the dudes from uh, his uh, Discord keep calling one of my cell phones, like so. Yeah, just ignore it. Yeah, Dag or in their text and like block it. Dangle Bert Uber Dangle, thank you for the five dollars. You gift us with two banging momber ships. Thank you, sir. Are you talking about my tits? Yeah, you dickhole. Thank you, Danglebert. Dave Daffler, thank you for the $2. Name a grown adult that wears sunglasses inside. Oh, there's a lot of them. The Mega G. I wear yeah. sunglasses inside sometimes. Of course, always, especially when it's summer. Hi, Little Lemmy. Little Hi, Lemmy, Lemmy, $5. Good morning, dudes. Good morning, Little Lemmy. And Little Lemmy also does a Twitch show yes before us on saturdays um so everyone should go follow little lemmy on twitch i don't know if she does it on youtube too she used she was but i think she stopped or i stopped i don't know i was getting notifications for a while and then yeah she's she's on and off with youtube but uh but she's always on twitch and she's definitely worth a watch she's fine yes we are we're a fan of little lemmy dabble story and thank you for the two pounds joey c is afraid of me okay I believe it. I think they were sniping uh, the show last night. I, I didn't see it, but that's that's the word on the street. Joey see, C, dude, he's, he's the real deal. I mean, he ain't afraid of anyone, so I doubt that, true. bro. Do you believe that he worked for the MLB? I have my doubts. I mean, work because he worked in minor league baseball for a majority of the time, but he did do right. some... Uh, facility stuff at uh at wrigley so like working for mlb i i mean like what are we qu all right so you're questioning it as well yes i understand <laughs> i think everyone's questioning it we don't know if this is true joey c anyway yes we all believe you joey c and and more importantly no one cares safety first 199 kb's five dollar youtube membership is so dumb chat only oh yeah i saw that kb is now back to doing memberships apparently so and what they're five dollars and all it is is like you can chat or was he doing members only chat now are you I talking know. about kb the chick uh, with the big tits or no. kb the dude who sleeps with teenagers that that one allegedly i mean fact, well why are we yeah. talking about teenagers was she 19 because that's a teenager yeah what are you I mean, talking about how old was she I think 17 17 to 19 
it's questionable, but he was but that's he, a big like, that's on that's on record. I mean, like he's he's over totally he's legal. over ten years older than her. But that's totally her legal. Seventeen is age. I mean, of I'm not I'm not quite I'm not I'm not talking about law here. I'm just saying. Okay, but like, why are we all trying to get each other in trouble? This is ridiculous. I'm not. Just saying it's creepy. Gretchen uh Strandall, thank you for the 499. My son is mega poor, but I'm mega hot. I want Ian Hawkins. I, oh, I'm assuming this is your mom. Yeah, yeah. Sorry. Oh, sorry right. about that. In her 60s, I, though. I had it's no not a big idea. deal. Is that a real picture of her? Because she does kind of look pretty. Yeah. Okay. Well, no, again, I had no idea. I'm sorry. No, I don't this care. Not, I mean, I, it's, Ian Hawk uh posted everywhere all the time, so it's not a big deal. Jason Fusco. Oh, thank you, OJ. Uh, 199. Where is Cardiff, motherfucker? Uh, Cardiff is at Carl's. He's at uh, WATP South. He's at the pool party. Uh, OJ and I came back yesterday. It was a fun time. Carl does have uh, store brand chips and store brand soda, though, which sucks. But now you know how he's able to afford two houses. You would never have store brand chips and soda at your pool party, would you, Mega G? No. No, agreed. I need Coca Cola products and at least Lay's brand chips, if not Ruffles. Uh, Dave Daffler, thank you so much for the five dollars. Cut Chow loose. Oh, Chow's a good guy. I like Chow, he's the mega G. Yeah, plus we were watching that it's clip, going. and that's why I just wanted to have Chow and OJ on again. I didn't think that this I had no idea I was thing. coming on. No, I mean, no, just... I just sent you a link. Yeah. I'm sorry. I I hope you don't feel like I tried to, you know. No, I'm actually glad that you had him on yeah. because I, I didn't want him to think there was like any ill will or animosity because of that last night. Right. So. That's all. I Never. wanted to just get you guys on and just kind of like because I thought it was great. I thought this was fantastic. This the last 10 minutes, go on Joey C C's channel. It's Joey C outfit. And go watch this whole thing. But I'm telling you, the last 10 minutes were great because it was just OJ and Chow getting into it. Yeah, but and Ch Chow was allegedly high on something. And I definitely, I was drinking a little bit and I was smoking weed and I was tired. And I was like the third show I, we had done. Casey Armstrong went on Ray DeVito and then I was on this show. So, yeah, yeah I, I take nothing personal, bro. Okay, okay yeah, because I'm not yeah. trying. Like, neither, yeah. neither do I. Okay. Blinky Jedi, thank you for the 199. Why does time go so fast in Italy? All the day goes. Oh, that's ah. fantastic. What a tremendous joke. Thank you. Tukey oh. will be using that soon. Bill Loney became a YouTube member. Welcome back, Bill Loney. Where have you been? I wonder if that's the real Bill Loney, though, because he goes by like Esquire Bill Loney now. Oh, a fake Bill Loney. Could be. Could be. Uh, JB, thank or Joey B, thank you for the $2. Chat. Who smells worse? One Dr. Chow, two Dr. Chow's bad. Dude, oh I smell God. like fucking, I smell like hell right now, bro. I, I'm not going to lie about that. You're a mega G. Yeah. Uh, Herbs, $2. Chow knows I'm no fan, but those callers are gay as fuck. Yeah, yeah. I mean, like, they're, imagine dedicating your whole life to being a super fan of Patrick Melton. But I mean, like I an OG law cow, you know. What you think, Ian Hawk dedicated his whole life to becoming a super fan of Melton? He, he, yeah, basically. All I right. mean, he's he's spending time calling in, talking about Patrick Melton and all this weird shit. True. So, American yeah. Cupcake, thank you for the two dollars. You guys hear about the Italian midget? He was six two. <laughs> I don't know if I get that one. I don't either. <laughs> I never get any you. of them. I'm pretty but, retarded. But thank you for the joke, American Cupcake. Kenneth Pogue, uh, thank you for the $2. Joey C. powders his balls with basil. Yes. Yeah. Or Parme Parmesan cheese. Yep. Or Romano Pecorino. Uh, oh, yes, I believe that. I have heard that. We don't even have to say alleged because I, I, for a fact, know that's true. Dave Daffler, thank you for the two dollars. Chow has a ninety-two story with many other years. Oh, I don't get it. that's the Perry Caravello reference. <laughs> nice, nice. The ninety-two story. He got blown by a dude to get work. Wait, did Perry get blown, or did he blow the dude? No, uh, the dude blew Perry. Nice way to go, Perry. 
I think Perry played with his balls, the other guys' balls. Ew. Or something. Yeah. Ew, Perry. Yeah. How'd you do that? Uh, Chris Holmes, skinny Chad Zumach, welcome. Two dollars. Sign my knife, OJ. <laughs> yes. I love how John doesn't realize if there was video of John interviewing OJ and saying, sign my knife, that it would have been played at Ignazium. Like we yeah. wouldn't have heard, like it would have been like the Mike Walker fart. We would have heard it all the fucking time. I think someone brought that up as a question to ask OJ if you ever run into him. And I think this is like the um the DC flight. I don't, you know how everyone was like, oh, remember when Howard called the DC flight uh company or whatever the airline was? But right. in fact, he never did. It was all just like them talking about doing it, and he kind of did a little skit. I'm starting to think that's what happened here with the signed OJ knife. I think someone brought it up and said, Hey, if you're ever in OJ's presence, you should ask him sign my knife. There's right. just, just no way this ever happened. Uh, John Fusco, 199. All these guys are cornudos. Cornudos. What are cornudos? Anyone? I actually don't know that one. I don't know either, but I know Jason no, Fusco. He called me. He left a voicemail, and it was very angry. We have so many voicemails, but we can't get to them now. Dave, we'll have to get to him next time. Or maybe we'll just do a special show of just voicemails. Oh, good idea. I like that. Maybe, Dave, a, tu maybe a Tukey show. Yes, because I think all the voicemails are aimed at Tukey anyway. Oh, you talked to Mega G yesterday. Uh, Tukey uh, talked to Mega G yesterday, right? Yes. Yes, I yeah. do. I remember that. Yeah, He, he did. The Mega G called in. Dave Daffler, thank you for the two dollars. Chow can't afford a Timex. Ooh, those fighting words. That's fair. Yeah. Who the fuck wears a watch anymore? Dave Daffler, yeah. thank you for the two dollars. Chow is the new Stevie Lou. I, I wear a watch when I go to a uh, formal event. I have a very or oh, some a watch I consider nice. Yeah. And, uh, sure, I wear it. Yeah, I don't. I don't know. I can't like even a smart watch. It just seems annoying to me. I can't wear jewelry. Uh. All right. We're caught up. Okay, awesome. Uh, all right, so we are just trying to get to now Spider. What was his name? Alamar. Spider Alamar. Him talking, and once he starts talking, I'll tell you to close your eyes and tell me you don't hear Beetlejuice. Why not? No one knows who you are, dude. You're an orange. Right. Well, thank <laughs> you everybody for coming and beat it. And I'll let you guys plug your shows. Beat and... it. Nerd, are you talking to guys? Me? Are you yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I, mean, I don't know who you are. 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 Shut your eyes. On this show, calm down. I'm fine. Child's butt hurt because I'm calling him out for being on drugs. <laughs> All right, yeah. OJ, plug the show. <laughs> Here, Joey C in the back. It's great. I'll um, be dabbling live tomorrow with Stutcho Depot. Is it? It's be dabbler live. Be dabbling. All right, be da be dabbler live. You said be dabbling. I was so ready to go to bed. I know. All right, one. Come on, Spider. step in one. Go ahead, plug. So, sorry, guys. Great show. <laughs> was it? See everyone tomorrow. <laughs> I feel like it was just like a, a, a repeat, like the whole show. Yeah. Well, oh, no, I came on here for one reason and one reason only. I don't only, know why. Every... Just to... Does he talk oh, more? I can't remember. Dude, now. You go back yeah, to I the, don't know. I don't know what the, the beginning going on anymore. Like, uh, he cuts like a so promo mad. on Melton. Oh yeah, he did. You're right. I did hear that. I've, I fucking. I don't know where to find it. Though. I was, I was, I was like, in the stream. Like was dying. I was, I was definitely in there. To be funny, like. But yeah, anybody, you're right. Kid, but I thought he did give like a promo. I think when the time comes, we have. Yeah, I've... I'm not gonna find that it. filter. OJ, be fucking like, lucky. Yeah, he's like, that. But yeah, that's. There's oh, I totally. I... <laughs> no, no, I mean, I mean, yeah. he said about my daughter. I hope he, but I'll tell you what. What? Oh, maybe guess we'll play what? next time. Yeah, well, we gotta I... find it. But there was a there was a promo that a uh, spider cut. You're fucking right. I wish I pulled it. God damn it, spider's the man. He's funny, man. Yeah. He is. What the and fuck people is are going on? Him. 
He's like, he's like, no, we're, we're, sh- we're taking down the window. We're going to take it down. But what do I do with the money? It looked like he Maybe was I'll send to it talk. to us, um, her mother it. or, you know, do it. A- oh, and like, he's the creepy. Do shit. This is your life. He's right, like, oh, yeah. I want to. If I can find that clip. All right, I can't find it. If anyone uh, can cut that and send it to me, that was fucking great when Spider uh, pulled his uh, promo. But yeah, he totally sounds like Beetlejuice. Yeah, he does. It's really funny. Uh, Dr. Chow, thank you for coming on. I'm sorry that, uh, you know, you got a bunch of shit from Ian and other people, but. No, no, it's all good, bro. And I appreciate it. Uh, Till next time, King. Yeah, promote uh, promote your stuff. I got nothing. Oh, are you still doing a show with Lil Mir? Yeah, yeah. Oh, we're having uh we're gonna have uh Bob Levy and hopefully his son on to talk of music. Oh, there nice. you go. Nice. When would when when is that? Do you know? Uh it's not I don't know. I don't know. I don't book any of it. I don't know where all these rumors are that I'm doing all this stuff. It's a little mere show, but yeah. So there you go. Well you're a man for that. Dave Daffler, thank you for the two dollars. I just killed the spider. I feel much better now. That's fantastic, but the, the, I'm telling you, I never saw that spider again, and it's been two weeks. It's somewhere. Wow. I don't know where it is, but it's not here. Uh, so, but thank you again, Doctor Chow. I know I just send you a link, and uh, you know, out of nowhere, and uh, thank you for taking it. And again, I just wanted to go over this thing last night because it was funny. You and OJ yelling at each other, and uh, <laughs> I knew no one had real hard feelings towards each other, so I wanted to make sure you guys made up. Um. But yeah, thank you for coming on. I appreciate it. And we'll talk to you soon, Mega G. And the Mega G is gone. And now it was just us. Yeah, I'm not going to get into the voicemails. Um, This was a great show, man. This was a long show. It's long, but it, show. it didn't really, it didn't, you know, sometimes you get these shows that, you go two and a half hours and they feel like two and a half hours. And then sometimes you have shows like these where it just kind of flew by. I was, I had a blast. It was awesome. Me too. And I'm going to break the fourth wall. Now I did not send Shuli a link today because Shuli was traveling today and told me he could not get on the show. So uh, I wanted to just play with the idea that I sent Shuli uh, the link and he was too much of a coward to come on. But I will come clean and tell you, I did not send Shuli a link today. Just a bit. Most people did not want me to send Shuli a link. I thought it would have been fascinating to have Shuli come on and rebut. Yeah. Um, I uh, From the beginning, I I wanted Shuli Shuli to to come on, but not until after well uh, that's yes stut joe that's got everything off his chest 100 percent, and i told stut joe that i one i said i won't have shuli on until after you've already said anything and also do you not want me to have shuli on and uh uh stut joe was pretty cool with everything but i i don't think he really wanted uh to deal with shuli on this show i think they'd rather just deal with it in private but uh yeah so it kind of worked out yeah it all worked out uh but yes thanks for having me guys stud joe depot thank you stud joe depot for uh being willing to um and yeah i thought he was classy about it you know he was he he didn't bring up he didn't mention people's names he didn't mention money Mm -hmm. he didn't really get into any specifics um and Mm -hmm. yeah i thought again i thought it was very classy of him no it was good and then, uh, and then, yeah, thank you to, so thank you to Stutcho Depot for coming on. Thank you to Carlos Danger or Stevie Lou, whoever that was. I still don't understand that joke. Fat but. Stevie Lou. Oh, that was Fat Stevie Lou. Oh, I like yeah. that character. Yeah. Uh, thank you. Thank you to all the callers. Thank you to the gifted membership people. Yes. Thank you to the people who bought memberships. Thank you to the super chatters. Thank you guys. Oh, so much. Oh, my Debbie. Uh, I appreciate you guys. We we appreciate you guys a hundred percent, OJ and I, um, and uh, so thank you for uh, hanging out with us on this fine Saturday uh, morning, and uh, we'll take a call because you called in right before I went off. What's going on? Hey, two hours eleven minutes and forty two seconds. Oh oh, thank you. Okay, two hours eleven minutes and forty two seconds. You are the man. Is that thank Citizen you. M? Yeah, thank you. Are you Citizen M? You, bye. I think that was Citizen M. Yeah, okay. So thank so you. That's where Spider, I guess, uh, cuts his promo. Okay. Apparently. That is awesome. Ah, you guys are fucking great. Thank you, Mystery Caller. Oh, shit. What did he say? Two minutes? 
11. Oh, wait, no, two hours, 11 minutes. Yeah. Shit. Oh, that's fine. Hold on. Okay. No, I just, I kind of forgot. Okay. And again, I know people are going to be like, I'll be right back. Right, hold on. All right, Queen. <laughs> All right, let's talk about Dabble verse OJ. <laughs> it's something funner than death jeez wow how did all this happen i feel bad like looking at christina she has a demon uh <laughs> but uh okay hey call uh, yeah yeah uh oh no sure oj do you want to interview spider almar he's got something to say all right here no, we go no, i gotta get some of my chest real quick yeah Patrick Melton quit attacking the people I care about. If you don't stop, we will attack 10 times harder. Quit the games you're playing is not freaking right. I ain't playing. Damn. That was beautiful. That was awesome. Spider, you are the fucking man. We will no longer be saying anything about Joey C and the people that you love, Spider, because we do not need you to come at us a hundred times harder than uh, Melton is going after you guys. But I scared the shit out of me. That was fantastic. Thank you, caller, for that. I'm glad that we were able to pull that up. Uh, spider juice. Kinky Loco Spider <laughs> Juice. <laughs> Now, listen, I, like I know it's just a, like a language thing or whatever. I'm sure English is not his first language, but there's something about the tone of his voice that he sounds just like B. He does sound a lot like him. Uh, Spider or uh, Islanders 516. Thank you for the 199. Tukey Soup every Sunday at 10 p.m. T-W-O. T-W-O. There will be no Tukey Soup this Sunday, but I'm going to reach out to Wendy and I might do her show or Tukey might do her show instead because uh, she, it's uh, Wendy's adorable. She's like, hi, Tukey, can you do my show? And I'm like, oh, oh yeah, yeah, do your show, Wendy. When? Uh, Sunday at 10? I'm like, oh, that's when Tukey Soup's supposed to be on. So I'm seeing something in the super chat. Uh oh. TWO, maybe we could do a TWO at two oh, sometime in the future. That's interesting. Tukey World Order at two. Yes, I like that. Always thinking about you're a marketing genius, OJ. Thank you, Dave Daffler. Thank you for the two dollars. Spider, go steal a TV in the name of justice. Stop it. <laughs> Spider seems like a very, very nice boy. Yeah, he does. He really and I'm does. glad that he's still with the Joey C family because apparently, like, he tried to date one of their daughters or something and didn't work out, but he always remained close with the family. So that's great. Yeah. Fantastic. Uh, Earl of Fat, thank you for the $1 super sticker. Appreciate that very much. And again, we do not condone making fun of people's dead relatives. We just don't think that. It should really be policed either. Like, I don't know. And I know that opens the floodgates to me to be harassed if someone in my family dies. But what am I going to do? I'm just not going to bring it up. I'm not going to mention it. I'm not going to fuel the fire anymore. I won't I won't be watching that person's show. I'll tell you that. If someone hates me, I mean, if people send me clips, that's fine. You know, I, and then maybe that's what's happening. I think she might have said people send her clips and stuff like that. But those people are scumbags. And you should block them and not talk to them either. And again, it's very simple. I mean, you just ignore. Turn your phone off. And that's a good bit of advice for everybody right now. It's Saturday. What are you doing? Stop watching this crap. Go outside. Go lay in a hammock, which is what El Harible will be doing in about mm, two minutes. I don't wear a watch. I told you I don't wear a watch, but that was for effect. All right, OJ, anything you want to talk about? What are you doing this weekend? What mutant show are you going on this weekend? <laughs> I'll probably be on with Jake. It cool. seems like he's going to be monetized, and that's been my mission is to oh. get him monetized, and he's only got like 40 hours. All right. So, so yeah, I that want is... to be there with him when he's 
gets his first mon- uh super chats and stuff. You're right. Okay, I, that I, I I misspoke earlier. That is big news. Jake Huston is about to be monetized at Jake Husden, H U S D O N. Yeah. Go give him a follow. Jake is a friend to everyone here. I know everyone, you know, goofs on him or whatever. And that's the thing that, you know, everyone's going to be like, oh, you can't goof on these people who live stream and they're obviously, you know, not all there. And it's like, well, where are we stop? Probably a dead daughter, but we didn't. <laughs> not that we didn't. I didn't do anything with the right. dead daughter. I just said it was kind of funny. And listen, Melton always ends up doing something nice in the end, so I'm sure he'll do something. But you have to buy those three extra pitchers. There's three, still three more pitchers that le- need to be left turned. How do we even know this is truly their daughter? We haven't seen the full picture. So for $300, we can end this bit. So go there now. Go give Melton $300 to end this bit. And then it's over, and it's never brought up again. And again, I'm sure he'll do something nice. And he's not obligated to. He doesn't have to do anything. So. Joey B, thank you for the two dollars. Who is more autist? Number one for Doctor Chow. Number two for Spider. What were the results of our last poll? Who smelled oh, worse, Doctor Chow or Doctor Chow's vag? Do we know? I, I I think it was. I I I would only be guessing. I wasn't paying attention. Yeah, I, didn't, I missed that one. This one we're getting a lot of one so far. Oh, sorry, Doctor Chow. Hack ride. Are you sure Dr. Chow said my show is the gayest thing a man can do? I'm pretty sure there's gayer things he's done. Oh, that's the thing. These guys have a beef. Oh, do, do they really hack ride and Dr. Chow? Yes. Oh my God. Hack ride's like a demon. Yes. Like the, the, the fiend who recently passed away. And Chow, I think was uh, the kind of nah, nah, nah. dog in the gimmick. Oh, Chow was dogging hack rides gimmick. Yeah, they've, they they have. So I don't know where it stemmed from, but they have some kind of ongoing beef right now. This fucking community never ceases to amaze me. Things just keep happening every week because every week I'm like, OK, we finished the show. Now, what are we going to do next week? But it's like I can't even think about what we're going to do next week until literally Friday because so much shit happens. And then you got to filter through because you're like, OK, Melton talked about this or BS show has done this to death. We try to stay a little original here. Dislabeled. Thank you for the uh, $2. What's the deal with Chow's mail order bride? I didn't know that. I heard someone earlier said that he paid for his wife and he didn't really, he didn't, you know, say no. So whatever. I don't know. Amazon, right? Two day delivery. Nothing wrong with that. Listen, we all have to meet people somewhere. What's the difference if you meet them at a bar, at a grocery store, online, in an online Russian catalog? Dude, I'll tell you what. When I was in school, there was a a, a girl that, a young woman that did that. She was a mail order bride. Really? And, uh, she was fucking beautiful, man. And then uh, with mm-hmm. that accent, oh, God. But yeah, she married some dude that was loaded. A mega G. A mega yeah, G. They're all looking for mega G's. Yeah. Bill Loney <laughs> with the five gifted memberships. Oh, Bill Loney. Send me an invite. I'll do your show, Bill. Yeah, and I still have to do your show, Bill. I don't know much about trucking, but I guess I have questions. And I'll do your show anyway. I, I've told you a million times I'll do your show. Yep. But you don't say no invite. Never. Dave Daffler, thank you for the two dollars. And I understand. I, I feel like he thinks he's like you know, like I have too much shit going on, but I can make time for you, Bill. Bill, fun fact, Bill is the first person who ever supported El Harible, ever. He uh, Monetarily, at least. He was the first person to ever donate. So I, you have a special place in my heart, Bill Loney. Uh, Dave Daffler, thank you for the $2. Chow owes Columbia House. Oh, I wish I was wearing my Columbia House shirt. But yes, I think a lot of people owe Columbia House. I Probably why they went out of business. That whole 25 CDs or 12 CDs for a cent, that didn't really work out very well. Because then, But then the scam was that they'd start sending you CDs you didn't order. Remember that? Oh, and if yeah. you didn't bring it back, if you didn't mail it back, you got charged for it. What a fucking scam. How is that legal? We're going to send you shit you didn't order, but because we have your payment info on 
That is crazy. Bill Loney, thank you for the $2. Jets first half money line. See you at the window. When does football start? Is it this Sunday? No way. I don't think so. Is it? I'm so. Oh, dude. Yeah, I'm behind on all that. But yeah, they cut. They did cut the preseason. There's only three preseason games now. Oh, maybe there. Maybe it does start this Sunday then. And maybe it does. Yeah. I'm so fucking out of the loop with everything. Unless it might even be tonight. Oh, because of like a Saturday, but they don't normally do real season Saturday games. They they have been uh, At first, right? They, yeah, they do stuff. They got Sunday, Thursday, any day they can get a game. So I wouldn't be surprised. I'll just say that. Hmm. Yeah, I have no idea. Like, unless there's a dabbler football league, I have no idea what is going on. Same in the real world. I know. Uh, at Carlos, send ETH at what? uh all right uh, i think that's it because yeah i don't want to get into um voicemails now because we have a shit ton of voicemails so again i might have to do a special tukey show for voicemails and stuff like that uh but yes thank you everybody enjoy your weekend go out and do something what is that oh sorry uh two dollars <laughs> go ahead you, you hit it all right Jason Fusco, thank you for the 199. You guys are not catching my motherfucker motif. Sorry. <laughs> you want me to be angrier? Where's Cardiff, motherfucker? Uh oh, 6 p.m. East today, still preseason. You're betting on preseason games, Bill Loney? Yeah, that's bad. That's bad. But you say the money, first half money line, huh? For the Jets. I kind of like that. I don't know why. I didn't like it 20 minutes ago, but now I love it. Might have to put a couple bucks on that. All right, everybody. But yeah, please go stop watching internet stuff. Go out. Go be with your loved ones. Go, um, you know, outside. Go feel. It's it's cold here. It's been cold. Yeah, it's, it's not cold, but it, it's cooled down quite a bit. It's uh, 75 today. It's going to go down to like 60s the next couple days so bill loney says he's yes and he's been winning kinky loco says 1-800 gambler yes if you or someone you know has a gambling problem have them call 1-800 gambler bet with your head not over it 1-800 gambler for all your quitting gambling needs soviet skunks say jets stink yes but we shall see they have a new quarterback oh very exciting every year Jets fans get very exciting before the games actually start. And they say, this is our fucking year. We got Brett Favre. We got Aaron Rodgers now. This is going to be our fucking year. And then they always start out one and three. Yeah. Hey, the, the Broncos did it with uh, Peyton Manning. So, yes, we shall see. I, I would love my whole family are Jets fans. I'm realistic. I only care about whatever team I bet on. I've never had an affiliation to a football team. But uh, yeah, my whole healthy. family. It's not yeah. healthy. No, it's I, nice because I've never been let down except for every yeah. week on my gambling. Right. I, yeah. I was a diehard Cleveland Browns fan, so you could, uh, I'm sure you can understand. understand. But yeah, not anymore. Now I'm just a casual fan that could give two shits. 100%. I watch the highlights after the game. If we win, I'll go watch a, a 10 minute clip on YouTube. Yeah. I just, I, I, I can't give a shit less. I am in a I'm in a fantasy league though, uh, which pays out a lot of money. So hopefully, uh, but I, I gave all the duties to my 17 year old brother, so he's running the team. I just fronted the money, so I'm a cool. silent partner in it. <laughs> anyway, thank you guys so much. We will see you next week for a brand new be dabbling live with El Harible. And remember, dabblers, to always be. Hello, everyone. This is your favorite world famous host, Stuttering John. Thanks for watching Be Dabbling Live with El Hor Eblay. Leave him a voicemail anytime and we'll play it on the show. 973 440 9770. Follow at El Hor Eblay on Twitter at B Dabbler. Follow OJ on Twitter at Obnoxious John. Till next time, Be Dabbling. Kiki, yeah!
Yeah! 2-2-2-2-2-2-2-2-2-2-2-2-2-2-2-2-2-2-2-2-2-2-2-2-2-2-2-2-2-2-2-2-2-2-2-2-2-2-2-2-2-2-2-2-2-2-2-